Hey guys how are you doing? I hope you all are doing well. This is the final part of what if Naruto lost everything. So without any further delay let's start today's video. Either there's a rat in our organization, or this Naruto kid is just the troublesome of an individual. I agree, we must acquire the tailed beasts in a timely fashion if we wish to combat him, the voice was cut off as another began to speak up. No, they firmly stated, the tone leaving no room for argument. With how strong he is now, there's no telling how much he's hiding from us. The fact he was privy to the knowledge that Didara's weakness was lightning jutsu is proof enough that we must strike now and we must strike hard. The other voice became quite frantic as they attempted to come up with a counter to the argument. Unfortunately, we'll have to bide our time, though, came a third voice. Although he is only one child, we know not of his limits nor his intelligence. For him to sever all of the nerves in Didara's body proves that his knowledge and strength are both facets we must equally prepare for. Not to mention he has allies such as Kakashi Hitaki, Might Guy, and the backing of Tusani. A silent moment of contemplation ensued between the three disembodied voices. We have a plethora of options. For right now, let Hidan and Kakazu know I have a task for them. If there's one thing we know about this Naruto, it is his emotions are a crutch let's cause a ruckus, shall we? The wooden desk cracked from the ferocious nervous tapping made by Tsunade as her eyes scanned the paper in her hands. Kakashi stood with a stoic expression, his hands folded behind his back. This report is rather concerning, to the abstract statement, the Jonin nodded with a sigh. It truly is. On one end we have a very powerful ally, but on the other, we have a volatile teenager susceptible to being consumed by rage. Tsunade fixed a glare on Kakashi that made the man flinch. Don't talk as though Naruto's loyalty is questionable. He's not some weapon with an on-off switch he's a human being, Kakashi. The silver-haired man shuffled slightly, feeling rather unnerved by the way he was being reprimanded, and chose to back down. You're right. I apologize if it came off as though I was undermining him. I merely meant that we should probably do something about his temper. That won't be an issue for now. We must deal with the most pressing matter. The info we've acquired from the fallen Akatsuki member, Sasori, are we to trust what he says or believe we are being led into a trap? If we were to do the latter, we are risking the chance in acquiring very valuable information in the form of leads to Orochimaru and Sasuke, more insight on the plans of the Akatsuki, as well as a valuable prisoner should we succeed. However, looking at both sides of the spectrum, should we go forth and take the risk, it's possible we are led into the hands of either side, Orochimaru or the Akatsuki. But this is only considering that Sasori had this planned out far ahead of time, which is highly unlikely. It's possible he merely expected to die between the time of reaching the rendezvous point and the mission to capture Aikibi, and due to unfortunate for him circumstances, he had to expedite passing on the message. Tsunade leaned on her hand as she tapped the wooden surface of her desk, dragging a finger across the oak and absently inspecting the dust on her fingertip. So what's our move, milady? Kakashi asked, still running various scenarios in his head. Shizun chose now to step in. If I may interject, ma'am. Tsunade raised an eyebrow but gave the signal to speak. I hope you aren't planning on adding Naruto to the team assigned to retrieve the information. Upon receiving a mild glare, she chose to elaborate, waving her hands frantically as she did so. I mean, we may be playing right into Akatsuki's hands should we let the Kayubi leave the village walls. But, Kakashi interrupted before Tsunade could respond. That runs the risk of putting the village in danger should the Akatsuki plan on making a frontal assault in the form of confrontation. I doubt even all of our greatest ninja would be formidable enough to take down a group of rogue s rank ninja. Our best bet is to bite the gun. Tsunade sighed, a tired look on her face. Though I love to gamble, but hate the results, I'll put my faith in you for this, Kakashi. Shizun looked before retreating to her former position, choosing to stay quiet. I say we go forth with the mission, and yes, we'll bring Naruto along. He's an integral asset should we encounter Sasuke and a great way to bait him out. All of a sudden, the wooden door behind Kakashi creaked open, causing him to turn around, while Shizun's eyes widened at the intruder. The hard tapping of a cane could be heard as the figure made its way into the center of the room, directly beside the Jonin. What a surprise the Warhawk finally wishes to make his move. Agreed. I believe some behavioral management is in order a babysitter, for lack of better words, Tsunade's eyes narrowed as the newcomer presented. 
Hurry up, you too, tardiness is a horrible habit, came a stern yet soft voice at the gates of Konoha, I for one, like to be punctual. I wish you were shyer like you used to be, mumbled a more brash voice, his response was bark and a glare. The veins around the victim of the statement's eyes bulged, giving her a menacing look as she stared down at the boy, make another comment like that and I'll cut off the chakra pathways to your Kiba, Hinata, it would be illogical for you two to keep arguing, why? Because not only are you wasting precious time we could be using to expedite our movement to the Hokage's office, but you would also be missing out on greeting an old friend, came a very stoic voice along with a logic-based explanation. Kiba frowned, his fangs showing past his lips. I hate that logic mumbo-jumbo shit you do, Shino. It hurts my ears, he said, cleaning an ear out with one finger in annoyance for emphasis. His partner, a large great Pyrenees breed of dog, who he was riding on top of as they strolled through the village whined in response to his owner's statement. But you are right, Shino. I smell someone familiar around, the Inazuka boy said, nose in the air as he sniffed around. It does not concern me whether or not you can comprehend my speech patterns, Kiba. If you are not accustomed to them by now, I would simply be appalled at the lack of attention you pay towards your teammate, Shino stated lowly with a hint of hurt in his voice. Kiba fixed the Abarame with a deadpan stare, Great. Now he's acting all gloomy again. Naruto, can you come out already? Came the annoyed voice of Hinata Hayuga, as her head faced upwards. The trio stopped in front of a large tree and showed no surprise when orange and black figure revealed themselves. Ready to jump on top of me already, huh? Naruto replied with a grin. The indigo-haired heiress blankly stared as if waiting for something. Naruto took the chance to take in their new appearances one by one. Shino and Kiba's outfits had changed the least. Kiba now wore an all-black outfit that consisted of a leather zip-up jacket and black ninja pants. Akamaru had grown considerably, as Kiba was sitting comfortably on his companion's back. Naruto squatted down to scratch behind the canine's ears, laughing as the dog happily licked his face. Shino had his signature round sunglasses but now wore a sea-green jacket that went down to his knees and a hood over his head. He had the same upturned collar that obscured most of his face but this time in black. Good to see you. Guys, Kiba, Akamaru, Shino. Naruto greeted, standing up. Akamaru barked in response and Kiba grinned while Shino nodded. It is nice to see you well, Naruto. I can sense that you have kept up your training as my Kikaichu are already acting frantic towards the way your chakra has become. Shino static stoically yet with a hint of fondness that only those close to him would be able to pick up past his monotone. Naruto nodded and flexed a muscle. Kiba smirked. Doesn't matter how strong you've gotten cuz we're all above you in rank. Kiba declared loudly to which Naruto chuckled. Akamaru shook his head to disagree with his owner. Hey, what's so funny? Nothing, dog breath. It's just about the fact you're a chunin who would lose to a genin with little difficulty. Naruto stated with a false yawn. Kiba grimaced but decided to hold his tongue, as Akamaru's reaction to Naruto's chakra was proof enough that he wasn't simply showboating he could back up his talk. Whatever, he scoffed. Shino and I'll go ahead to the tower before Hinata creates a forest with how wet she's making the ground right now, he said, snickering at his own joke. Shino merely coughed. Hinata, who had been staring at Naruto the whole time without moving simply followed Kiba with her eyes. Kiba began to sweat nervously. Yeah, anyway, we're gonna go on A ahead if that's okay with you, Hinata. We'll even do the mission report. The way Kiba phrased it made it come out as more of a question but Shino dragged his foolish teammate away before the situation escalated. It was a pleasure catching up with you, Naruto. We hope to see you around, soon, Shino said with a nod that was returned by Naruto. So much for tardiness, the boy thought sarcastically. Likewise, Shino, he said with a grin before turning to the only person left. So, how may I be of service to you Lady Hayuga? Naruto asked with a smirk. His eyes trailed up and down the girl's form, taking in every detail. Her outfit had changed considerably. Gone was the bulky jacket she wore before. This one was lavender with white sleeves, and more form-fitting as well as thinner, hugging all her curves. She also had the zipper pulled down right below her breasts to allow them some breathing room, which they desperately needed. Her ample bosom was held up by no bra but a simple fishnet undershirt. She now wore tight, but comfortable, midnight blue ninja pants, her kanai holster strapped to her right thigh alongside her medical pouch. 
Her forehead protector no longer hung around her neck, but rather on her forehead, causing the bangs to hang loosely in front of it. She also had two noticeable longer bangs that framed both sides of her face, and her hair was tied into a loose side ponytail by a pink scrunchie. Hinata slowly licked her pink lips, continuing to stare up at her now taller crush with her hands in her pockets. Her pale lavender eyes gazed directly into Naruto's cerulean ones, and Naruto noticed they held unwavering confidence he had seen very few times from the girl in her younger years. Moving closer, she pressed her chest up against his abdomen, since he was too tall for them to stand chest to chest. The blonde made an exaggerated wince. You got them pierced, he asked with an eyebrow raised. Cuz, it definitely isn't cold outside. Hinata gave no sign to reveal she heard his comment, instead, she snaked her arms around his back, burying her face in his chest with a wide smile. Said blonde wrapped his arms around her waist, tightening the embrace. He slowly lowered his hands down her back to grip a certain soft area. Hinata bit her lip and let out a shaky breath. So, how's it going, stranger? She asked into his chest with a smile. The said stranger rolled his eyes. I'm living. What about you Lady Hayuga? The heiress in question sighed heavily before pulling back, Naruto's hands still on her waist as she placed her hands on his chest, feeling him up and down as if to see if he was real. I know you didn't come here to get me all hot and bothered, she said in a breathy tone. Naruto chuckled at the accusation, but if you are, she continued with an eyebrow raised towards him, it's working, she finished, biting her lower lip. It took far too much self-restraint than he knew was possible for him not to say what was truly on his mind but he sighed and stated his true reason for meeting up with her. I'm about to go on a mission and I need to recruit someone. Considering what the mission is, I knew you'd be one of the people best suited for it, he explained with a shrug. Hinata stuck out her lip in a mock pout that Naruto absentmindedly thought as adorable before she spoke, raising her hand to rest it on his cheek. Sorry, baby, she said stroking his cheek with the back of her knuckle, eliciting a low purr from him. Naruto blushed when she giggled at the action. I just got back from a B-rank mission and we have to do our debriefing right now, she said in a downcast tone, mad at herself that she couldn't help out her crush. Naruto smiled and leaned forward, planting a kiss on her forehead that made the girl pout once again. It's fine, I understand how it is for you to be taking high-ranked missions back to back as a squad leader. Hinata scoffed, pushing herself off of him with her arms crossed. No you don't, Jenin, she said with a glare. Naruto glared back before walking right past her, smacking her on the butt playfully, eliciting a yelp from the girl. He received a numb hand for his actions. Hinata gave a grin that mirrored his own signature one and he grimaced at her, flicking his wrist and regaining feeling in his hand. So, who have you thought of so far? Naruto hummed in thought as he walked down the empty streets of Konoha. Well, first I have to look at my team there's me, Kakashi, and Sakura. All are pretty much heavy hitters, two are strategists but one is a wildcard. Hinata raised an eyebrow but felt it was clear as to whom he was referring. Out of all the skilled trackers, which are only you, Neji and Kiba, really, I don't know who to pick. I think someone good at gathering intelligence would be a good pick like Ino. The heiress listened closely as Naruto stated his options, giving advice here and there as to who would be the best pick. Eventually, they returned to Ino's name and concluded she was the most valid candidate. Stopping in front of a small building with the sign, Chunin Exam Planning Committee, the pair managed to run into a tired, as usual, looking Shikamaru. Yo! Naruto greeted the lazy Nara, who picked at his ear in frustration at the loud gesture. Hinata snorted at the boy's antics. Could you be any louder? He asked in annoyance. Naruto waved off the insult and draped an arm around Shikamaru's shoulder, jolting the teenager awake. What? He said when Naruto gave him a sly grin. You know that blonde lady friend of yours. He began in a playful tone that grated Shikamaru's nerves. I need you to tell me her whereabouts, it's important business, he finished in a far more serious tone, a stoic look on his face. Shikamaru's face looked pensive before he asked. Tamari. A puzzled expression was plastered on his face when he saw the shit-eating grin on Naruto's face but it fell when he saw Hinata shaking from laughter. Haha, you met Ino, didn't you? I'm surrounded by dumb. That'd be an unfair comparison troublesome. Individuals. Naruto clapped the boy on his shoulder with a smirk. Yep, yeah, I need to ask her if she can assist me on a mission, he said simply. 
Shikamaru shrugged. Can't help you, I don't know where she is, he said in a tone that sounded partially apologetic. The boy then nodded to a spot behind the blonde upon seeing his downcast look, but maybe he can. Naruto turned around to see a man with long, waist-length spiky brown hair, and a rather rotund face, a forehead protector with red cloth tied around his forehead. Two red swirl marks were on the man's cheeks, possibly birthmarks, that made him stand out apart from his rather large stature. He was wearing a red suit with plated armor on his torso, arms, and upper legs, having the kanji for food on the front. He had a lunchbox in his hands tied up in a piece of cloth fabric with the Nara family crest. Choji, is that you? Naruto asked with mild awe at the drastic change in the boy's appearance. He now stood far straighter and with more confidence, each footstep took being heavy and pronounced, as though to let people know of his intimidating presence. The aforementioned boy smiled, shaking his signature bag of chips in his hands as though to prove it was him. After handing Shikamaru the boxed lunch, he and Naruto exchanged a firm handshake and half hug. Yeah, it's me, the boy said rather abashedly, and look at you. You've grown so much. Naruto chuckled at the slight towards his former height, even doing so as the boy used his hand as a measuring stick to show the height difference, surprisingly, Naruto was taller. You're one to talk, man. I wonder how much muscle you're hiding under that armor, he said, tapping the back of his fist on the metal-plated chest. Choji gave a hearty laugh before shrugging. Oh yeah, Choji, do you know where Ino is? As the boy was about to answer, the four teens cut the pleasantries short, their danger senses on high alert. Naruto stood calmly with his back turned while a puddle of thick black ink splashed behind him, a long tendril of a shadow jutting out from the wet spot on the ground. Choji, Naruto said, more than asked with a calm look on his face. To the unspoken order, Choji's fist expanded to a size capable of gripping Naruto, who stood on the boy's palm who used it as a makeshift catapult. As Naruto soared through the sky at a fast pace, he saw a tribe of lions made of ink dashing towards his friends. Looking ahead, he saw that they trailed back to a figure sitting atop the roof of a building that stood at a fork in the road. Sparks flew as a metallic clang was heard, Naruto's kunai clashing with the hostile stranger's short blade. Nice block, dickless, the pale boy said with his eyes closed and a small smile on his face. Naruto stood still, blankly staring at his opponent. I don't think so, Hinata said. She was casually sitting with one leg over the other, feet dangling off the roof. She leaned back, placing her hands on the tiles of the roof and activated her by a kugan, staring back and forth between Naruto and the boy. Her eyes were fixed below the blonde's belt. She grinned. Yeah, not at all, she said giggling. Naruto resisted the urge to roll his eyes and watched as the boy's mouth turned into a small frown. This doesn't concern you, cow, a fist crashed into his cheek and his head was sent downwards at an angle, uprooting tiles until his momentum was completely stopped. He slowly removed himself from the rubble and cradled his cheek, Tonto now in the blonde's hand. He was twirling it like a baton. Hinata leaned forward on her hand, elbow propped up on her knee, bored with the current scene as she blew a bang out of her face. Watch your mouth, Naruto said with ice in his tone. Hinata smiled at his protectiveness. Words can get you hurt, you know. The pale boy spits out a glob of blood before putting on a fake smile once again. I understand that now, dickless. Now, may I have my weapon back? He asked politely, a hand outstretched. He tilted his head to the side to avoid getting impaled by the sword that was thrown directly at his face. That wasn't very nice, dickless, now was it. He said with a frown. I don't play by the rules, he casually said, stuffing his hands in his pockets. He watched as the sword impaled the ground several feet behind his opponent. Said opponent appeared in front of the sword in a quick burst of movement and once again plastered a smile on his face, gripping its hilt tightly. My master will be quite pleased with these proceedings, he said before vanishing in a glob of ink. Naruto quirked an eyebrow at the last statement but remained still, glancing towards Hanada and Team 10, he felt a presence appear next to him. Yo, Bor, what's up? He asked casually, holding out a fist in greeting. The platinum blonde had a tick mark on her forehead and her eyebrow twitched, crossing her arms. Naruto frowned as he was left hanging. What are you talking about, idiot? She huffed. Naruto pointed to the tattoo on her bare bicep. The girl blushed before wrapping her headband around her forearm to cover it up. 
Anyway, she said, waving off the embarrassment, what was that about? Gonzo's guys are after you now. Her fellow blonde shrugged as a response and she glared at the lack of an answer. Hinata stood up, stretching and walking over to Naruto. She grabbed his chin and turned his head to and fro before nodding. Good, you're not injured, Naruto earned a glare for his eye roll. Thanks for the entertainment, cutie, she said before meeting her lips with his for a brief kiss. Duty calls, she said, waving goodbye to all the ninja present before vanishing into thin air. Naruto hung. Why do you look so jealous, Ino? Naruto asked, still focused on the spot Hinata had disappeared. Damn, she's fast, he thought with a smirk. Ino replied through gritted teeth, jealous. Why would I be jealous? Naruto scratched his head. No reason, Rapunzel, he said, patting the girl's head before hopping down to the ground, waving to Choji and Shikamaru as he strolled away. Choji licked the salt off of his fingers, finishing his bag of chips. Ino, why are you blushing? He said with an eyebrow raise. Shikamaru contemplated if he should intervene but shoved his hands in his pockets and walked away. Troublesome. A rolling mass of red and brown passed by him, a purple blur hot on its tail. The pineapple-haired boy turned his head skyward. The clouds sure look nice today. What? Came the curt statement of a growingly irritate Naruto Uzumaki, once again, in the Hokage's office, Tsunade rubbed her temples to prevent the oncoming heading. Every time you come in here it's like a new problem stirs up when I give you an order, she said, exasperated. Sakura's blows, albeit not life-threatening injuries, only proved to irritate the boy even more. Sorry, milady, you know he can be a bit complicated, Sakura placated with gritted teeth, writhing in agony as she attempted to free her hand from the death grip Naruto had on it. Granny, Naruto began before clicking his teeth and changing his response, Lady Tsunade, he exaggerated upon seeing the tick mark appear on her forehead, all the while ignoring Sakura's grunts and whines, I don't find it necessary for us to have a third member for this mission. Three of us is competent. Enough. Tsunade shouted, cutting Naruto off mid-sentence. The boy did not even flinch, but let go of Sakura's wrist, rubbing his neck in embarrassment. You will accept this recruit as a member of Team Kakashi. End of discussion. She finished with a scowl. Her patience was wearing thin with the way the elders had treated her judgment regarding the situation, that doubled with Donzo's lackadaisical attitude towards this blatant act of insubordination, and her final semblance of sanity would not be tried by one of her favorite people, not today. Apologies, Lady Hokage, Naruto said in all too polite tone, it seems I forgot my place there. Sakura fell on her butt with a thud, blinking as Naruto suddenly let go of her. As she looked up, even from her position on the floor, she could see the disgust hidden behind Naruto's fake smile. Let's see him. Shizune, who had been quiet during the whole ordeal, moved from her position by Tsunade's desk to open the door. Could you stop staring at my? I'm trying to see if what he calls you has any merit to it out. Anyway, Naruto began in a nonchalant tone, grinding his knuckles on Sakura's head, why are you here? Naruto's eyes shifted to the pale boy wearing a crop top with Anbu-style clothing, Tonto strapped to his back, the boy gave a sickeningly fake smile to Naruto as he spoke. Well, Dickless, someone has to look after you. After all, you need behavioral correction, Naruto scratched his chin in thought. Hmm, is that so? Removing his fist from Sakura's skull, he placed his fingers in a flicking position and faced them in Sai's direction. Excuse me, he began, as the sound of air shifting was heard, a sharp slash resonating through the air. Sakura and the boy blinked, confused as to what happened. As Sakura cradled her head, she noticed a gash on the side of the pale boy's face. The said boy raised two fingers and dabbed on the spot where blood began to seep. While I have a tantrum. Hem, Naruto, what's the matter with you? Sakura shouted, a frown on her face as she rushed to the boy's side, using her mystic palm technique on the wound, closing it up. Are you alright? She began, hoping to get a name out of him. Sigh, he said with an eerie smile. Sakura backpedaled with a nod and right as she was about to introduce herself she was cut off, and I appreciate that an ugly baboon such as yourself proved to be useful. A bead of sweat trickled down Kakashi's forehead at the scene before him. Naruto holding Sakura underneath one arm as she flailed about in a fit of rage, all the while, a boy with pale skin and black hair in an Anbu-style outfit watched on with a fake smile, spewing out insults here and there. 
So the dickless imbecile has a thing for the ugly banshee. What a surprise. I should let the cowgirl with the milky eyes know. The sound of fabric being torn could be heard as the bandages on Naruto's forearms were forcibly ripped off by a burst of chakra, revealing several intricate seals that made his arm look like an art canvas. Suddenly, the pressure around the pale boy increased, causing him to hunch over. Insults towards me. I can take it. My friends. Especially when one of them isn't here to defend herself. Nah. I don't play that shit. Half of Naruto's face was shadowed by his bangs but one could see the piercing gaze of his crimson eyes, the same ones that indicated he was using the Kyubi's Kurama's chakra. The pale boy set his hands on his knees to steady himself. Am I clear? The blonde didn't wait for a response to let go of whatever bodily restrictions he had placed but took satisfaction in the far more humble atmosphere around the former Anbu. Sakura blinked. Ah, oh, he considers me a friend, she mentally gushed, a small smile on her face. She snickered as the boy set her down and gave her a wink, eyes fading back to their natural hue. Team Kakashi, since we've got a new face, let's do introductions, Kakashi said with his eyes drooping. This, will take some getting used to. Ladies first, Naruto said, nudging the pinket in the ribs. A playful smack sent him skidding across the ground, hands in his pockets as he grinned. Sakura Haruno, she greeted half-heartedly, glaring at the blonde. Sai watched the scene with mild interest, though indifference was on his face. My likes are practicing the ninja arts I specialize in, while my hobbies are the same. My dislikes include people who take advantage of others, physically, a snort interrupted her, which she ignored, and mentally. My dream for the future, she placed a finger on her chin in thought, is to carve my own path as a notorious kunoichi. Kakashi nodded at the introduction, inwardly happy at the proceedings. She's progressed greatly. Much more than the mere fangirl she was in her genin days. Next. Naruto Uzumaki. The boy exclaimed with a mile-wide grin. My likes are training in my friends, while my hobbies are finding ways to improve myself. My dislikes are presumptuous bastards and those who refuse to amend for their past mistakes. A deep silence ensued as a chill went through the area, causing all but Naruto to shiver. My goal for the future is to surpass all the Hokage, he finished, looking up towards the Hokage monument in the distance, specifically at a man with spiky blonde hair. The boy narrowed his eyes as he did so. He still has yet to reveal much, but as is the career we chose to take. Hopefully, he deals with whatever inner demons he's battling. Last, but not least. My name is Sai. I do not like much, while my only hobby is non-disclosable. I hate scum such as traitors especially those who abandon their village with little reason other than emotional baggage. My dream would be to crush those who go against Konoha and what it stands for. Hey, Sakura said, rising to her full height, looming over Sai's sitting form, who didn't look up, a small smile still on his face. Oh boy, I don't think I like the way you phrased that. Would you care to elaborate? Nay, Sakura, we have a mission to do, Naruto said, stretching as he stood. But didn't you hear? Sakura protested with her arms gesturing towards Sai. Naruto flicked his ear, as per usual. All right, Kakashi, lead the way. Kakashi raised an unseeable eyebrow. Naruto mimicked the action. What? Kakashi's eye turned into a U-shape before he spoke in an all-too-happy tone. I won't be leading the squad, sorry. Naruto's face dropped as he looked up. You mean to tell me? Don't worry though, Kakashi began, you'll be in good hands, he said, vanishing in a cloud of smoke. The sound of sandals making contact with concrete could be heard, turning everyone's attention to the newest addition to the team a man with a happy style forehead protector and large, almond-shaped eyes with piercing black pupils. Yamato, at your service, i.e., fill in for Kakashi Senpei. And from your assessment, how do you think the best way to approach the situation is? In all honesty, milady, I think people who don't know Naruto have blown this situation out of proportion like they always do when it comes to him. Tsunade's fingers steepled together as she leaned forward. Go on. Sakura nodded. No one takes time to understand him more so the general populace, and it's because of something not only out of his control the reason behind why he has the burden, that is nor is it an issue unless he's aggravated. So far, we've only seen him act up when it's justified, such as when people he cares about get disrespected, or when people he trusts give some reason for him to doubt them. My thoughts exactly. 
Although, some people tend to disagree with the facts presented. At that very moment, a light knocking was heard on the door, gaining Tsunade and Sakura's attention. Enter. The door creaked open on its hinges, slowly widening. With each agonizingly slow second, to reveal a frail-looking old man with spiky black hair and a face half wrapped up in bandages. He was wearing a white shirt, with a black or dark gray robe over the top of it covering from his feet, to just over his right shoulder. The robe concealed his right arm, as well. He had an X-shaped scar on his chin that gave him a menacing-looking appearance. His eyes were squinted to slits, giving the impression he was glaring at everyone in the room. The man balanced himself on a wooden cane, which tapped loudly on the ground as he sauntered into the room. His posture was very refined and poised, holding power in each step, even as he treaded silently on the wooden floor. Danzo, Tsunade began, resting her cheek on her hand, what is it now? The elderly man snorted derisively at the lack of professionalism, Sakura blinked at the interaction. Am I missing something, as unfit for the position as ever, aren't you? But enough with the foolishness. I have come here to find out whether or not you found a suitable replacement for Kakashi dare I say, a distinguished shinobi capable of leading Sai's cell. Replacement. For Kakashi. Sakura thought, who the hell is Sai? You dare question my selection capabilities. Tsunade questioned the warhawk with a raised eyebrow. Danzo gave no reply, merely tapping his cane impatiently, causing Tsunade to click her teeth. I have selected an exemplary shinobi, as a matter of fact, a former Anbu operative, one who has experience from as far back as the third's rule. Danzo inclined his head. Very well. This is adequate, he said before frowning, let's hope he is not too rooted too deeply in the pacifist teachings of that pushover, Serutobi. Sakura visibly flinched at the lack of respect and very poorly hidden disgust as the man uttered the third Hokage's surname. A vein bulged on Tsunade's forehead at the way her former sensei was addressed. Let's not forget, the man continued, those same seeds planted in Serutobi, are because of your grandfather's faulty teachings. Naruto, who had a wet towel wrapped around his neck looked in the mirror, licking his rather pronounced canines as he did so. Oi, is it just me, or do you feel the sudden urge to beat someone's ass right now? Kurama asked in a rather nonchalant tone. Naruto snorted in his mindscape, absently looking over the seals on his arms. Aye. It seems like someone troubling has presented themselves, he said, narrowing his eyes towards the vast black expanse upwards. Elsewhere, a pale-skinned black-haired boy along with a man in a reindeer mask felt the sudden urge to bow their heads in respect. A sickeningly cruel smirk found its way onto Donzo's face as he watched Tsunade's face contort into a look of barely withheld fury, Sakura standing idly by in between the crossfire. In any case, I am relieved, the Warhawk stated, spinning on his heel before tapping his cane on the ground, signaling his departure. Now, if you'll excuse me, princess, the door was closed softly as he exited. Sakura let a bout of silence ensue for all of 10 seconds before she inquired, who was that? Her eyes shifted between the closed door and the busty blonde woman. Tsunade stayed silent, thinking over the best way to answer. Sakura waited patiently for a response, getting one not a moment later. Some who, long ago, competed with my sensei, the late third Hokage, for the seat. His name is Danzo, and he is the leader of a hardline martial faction built upon rigid principles. Along with this, he is also Sai's supervisor. Sakura made a mental note to keep a close eye on the pale boy with the information provided to her. As the moderate third Hokage's student, and granddaughter of the first Hokage, he actively abhors me. Sakura looked towards her former mentor with an apathetic gaze, not knowing what to say. Well, it's about time you get going. Yes, ma'am. It was following this series of events that the trio of Sai, Sakura, and Naruto was following the unkempt brown-haired man out of the gates of Konoha, thoughts of Sasuke, and vindication, fresh on their minds. I need to tell you something later, Sakura whispered in a hushed tone. Naruto nodded his head in assent, leaning back to not be suspicious. After doing so, he walked off to the side to look as nonchalant as possible. The blonde watched all the proceedings with an apathetic gaze, though on the inside was a hurricane of emotions. Gara, That's Lord K's cage, to you, Tamari cut off the boy with a mild glare. The redhead along with his brother chuckled at the scene. Naruto scowled. Whatever. 
Since our villages are allied, it's extremely easy for me to say this if you ever find any complications with your seal, especially after the ordeal you just went through, contact me or Pervy Sage. Gara's eyes widened greatly at the statement. You mean you, Naruto waved his hand to prevent any questioning. I've dabbled in the arts here and there, but to your unspoken question, yes, Gara's eyes narrowed at the boy's calm dismissal. You and I both know you're a prodigy at the arts, to this statement, Naruto rolled his eyes, and my question was unspoken because you didn't let me ask it, he said in a partially exasperated tone. Their respective groups had to deadpan at the lack of professionalism. In the end, they chalked it up to the two being close friends, as well as two people who had a close kinship one that none could ever hope to reach, nor would they want to. Well, this is usually the part where we shake hands, or something, right? Naruto said with an embarrassed smile, his right arm outstretched. Gara mimicked the action with a small smile on his face. I know you're bad with farewells so I'll say, he began clasping his hand together with the blondes. Until next time, Naruto Uzumaki. The Kyubi Jinchuriki flashed a mile-wide grin, heartily shaking the hand. Likewise, Lord K's cage. So, Naruto said, silently closing the door to his apartment, what did you want to talk about? He asked his house guest. The room's other occupant leaned against the wall, blankly staring at the ceiling. A hefty sigh was let out before they spoke. It has to do with the information about the meeting with Kabuto. Naruto urged her to go on as he sat down on the couch, patting the cushion next to him. What about it? He asked, leaning back with one arm on the couch. Getting no response, he nudged the girl to get her to speak. She groaned aloud, which took him by surprise. How are we going to approach this? I thought I'd prepared myself for something like this but it's clear that I haven't. We're finally getting a lead on Sasuke and, I feel like we'll end up failing just as we did years ago. Sakura winced as she felt a sharp pain on her forehead, courtesy of Naruto. Turning to him, she saw him looking as relaxed as ever, his head facing the ceiling, but his eyes trailing over to her face, gauging her reaction. That was for acting like a dumbass, he said, leaning forward so that his arms rested on his legs. Sakura gave her teammate a perplexed look, which he took as a chance to elaborate. Firstly, we didn't fail in capturing Sasuke. We succeeded, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, outliers if you will, we were unable to anticipate his escape and or capture. Sakura blinked twice, processing the information. You know what outliers are. In any case, the boy continued, ignoring the girl's snickering, you, along with Tenten and Granny Chia were able to take down an S-rank threat. I think Emo with his head up his ass would be no chore for the two of us, if only it were that simple. What do you mean? Sakura asked, questioning why the boy trailed off. Naruto sighed. Sasuke ain't someone who you can win against using just your fists. It was a point in time where he and I understood each other. Just by trading blows, Naruto said, raising his hand in front of his face and staring at it with interest, that's what he told me, at least. That we were skilled enough to communicate through mere fisticuffs. Naruto then clenched his bandaged hand, the fabric making an odd tearing sound as he did so. But now, after I failed to reach him with my power alone, I'll have to find another way to do so. A younger Naruto stood over the form of Sasuke Uchiha, whose body was in a crater on the cliffside, Grabbing his collar, he raised him so they would meet face to face. The boy leaned forward, spitting on the boy's cheek, which was ignored as the blonde born his fangs, pissed off at the Uchiha's stubbornness. You have no parents, no siblings, how can you understand me? The black-haired boy cried, causing the blonde to tremble with rage, memories of the past flooding his mind. You were alone from the start. How can you know how I feel? It hurts because you had those connections. How can you know what it's like to lose that? In the teenage boy's mind, he was dumbfounded at the sound logic, but unable to deal with the current turbulent emotions, he responded the best way he knew how. His fists. He was right, I don't know the pain of loss, only the pain of not having anything to lose. Naruto, Naruto. The boy snapped out of his thoughts, sweat trailing down the side of his face as returned to reality, seeing the pink-haired girl now at his side with a glass of water in her hands which she offered to him. He greedily accepted, gulping down the cold beverage and giving his thanks. What happened? You spaced out there for a bit. You sure you don't need anything? Seeing that the girl's medical instincts were about to kick in, the blonde placated her by standing up and waving off her concerns. 
Don't worry, I'm fine, and I'm sure you will be too. All I can say is when we meet up with that bastard, the boy opened the door, waiting patiently for the girl to step past him and into the hallway. Don't let your instincts take over. Before the door shut in her face, the last thing Sakura saw was the crimson slitted pupils of the Kyubi, causing her to flinch. I'll be fine, but will you be? It was with these thoughts in mind that Sakura refused to even mentally berate herself as she sent Sai flying. A hand placed itself on her shoulder and she looked up to see the comforting blue orbs of Naruto, looking at her with disappointment, but underlying understanding and pride. A light tint of pink rushed to the girl's cheeks as she watched the blonde help the pale boy up. Control your girlfriend, dickless, the boy said as he rejected the offered hand with a wave. Naruto placed his hands into his pockets and walked right past the boy, shrugging. Control your mouth, otherwise, he slowly turned his head to the side, staring down Sai with cerulean, slitted pupils, some people might let their instincts take over. A bead of sweat traveled down Sai's temple as he briefly imagined Naruto's eyes shifting from crimson and back to their regular hue. The Kyubi Jinchuriki, he's a rather menacing one, isn't he? The ground rumbled beneath the three teenagers' feet to reveal Yamato, his hands in the serpent hand seal as he cried, four pillar prison technique. Suddenly, a cage made of wood reaching nearly 25 feet sprouted from the ground, causing various rocks and debris to get sent flying. The brown-haired former Anbu stared down the teenagers with a stoic gaze. We have five days to reach our destination. Keep it up, and I will gladly introduce you three to this cage behind me, do I make myself clear? He stated, finality in his voice, very becoming of a former Anvil. The three collectively nodded, all silently thinking their own slew of thoughts. Sai looked on with a disinterested look, Naruto's interest was mildly piqued but hidden by a click of his teeth, and Sakura looked mildly shocked her mind racing. Wood-style ninjutsu, to know a secret jutsu only inherited by the first Hokage, just who is Captain Yamato. So, what will it be? A night in this fancy box reacquainting yourselves with the values of teamwork or a nice relaxing bath at the hot springs. It was that ultimatum that found Naruto, Sai, and Yamato spending a relaxing night in the hot springs, the captain sighing with content as the steaming hot water soaked his skin. Now, isn't this a much better way to get to know each other? He asked with glee. Upon getting no response, his face took on a half-shadowed look, pronouncing his already eerie-looking eyes as he robotically stared at his companions. Don't you men think? Naruto nodded his head in assent, turning his head so that he didn't have to see the rather scary image of an angry Yamato. He had to admit, it was rather freeing to not have his bandages on for once, which revealed a very entrancing set of calligraphy plastered on his arms. Sai's eyes, however, were trained onto a spot in the water, as he embarrassedly looks at the spot in between his legs. As Naruto stood up to stretch, the boy decided to make a snide comment. Would you look at that? Naruto is a boy after all. Upon hearing giggling on the other side of the wooden fence, Naruto walked over to it, giving his own remark. Yeah, and it's the reason you've been silently comparing it to yours this whole time. He said, raising his voice to an octave loud enough for everyone to hear. Giggling turned to full-on fits of laughter, as the female side of the hot springs listened in on the banter. Sakura blushed a deep crimson, attempting to submerge herself in the water to avoid the embarrassment her teammates were causing her. Yeah, that's not a boy, that's a man. Sakura heard a fit of whispers and giggles coming from against the fence and looked over to see a horde of girls crowding around one spot AA people. Deciding to see what the commotion was about, Sakura asked what everyone was looking at. There's a blonde hottie on the other side of the fence, and I think he's the one who was talking before because the description lines up perfectly. Sakura's inner pervert surfaced as she pushed all the women out of the way to get a look at her teammate. The ensuing nosebleed sent the girl flying high over the fence and splashing right back down into the water. Crazy. If Pervy Sage attempted something like that he would have been beaten to a pulp, no questions asked. Yamato decided to give a word of advice to his temporary protege, wrapping a towel around his waist as he prepared to exit. Thus is the world of double standards, Naruto, just know this your mentor suffered. Six fractured ribs, both arms, and ruptured internal organs, for doing what? Peeping. On who? Granny. He gambled with his life there and it just so happens that Granny lost again. Naruto fondly held the first Hokage's necklace in his hand, smirking as he did so. 
Not expecting to be cut off, nor given such a comical explanation, Yamato could do nothing but shake his head, chuckling as he went back inside. Naruto's head turned as he saw a group of girls with hearts in their eyes staring at him, all mounted over the fence, balancing on their elbows. Do you have a girlfriend? They all simultaneously asked, shouted. The boy sighed and turned, accidentally, flashing them as he answered. Something like that. Hearing a collection of groans and whines Naruto snickered. The group of women fell back to their side of the hot springs, silently furious that their prize had already been claimed by someone. Nudging his pale teammate with his foot, Naruto wrapped a towel around his waist. You staying? He asked the quiet boy. Sai blinked, not responding as he did not know what to say. Realizing that it was most likely the lack of human interaction that made him unable to speak, and not simply rudeness, Naruto decided to stay, giving his teammate some company. Sai watched on in curiosity as Naruto floated on the water's surface, arms outstretched in the most relaxed manner possible. Yamato woke up with a yawn, taking in his surroundings as one does when awaking in unfamiliar territory. Seeing a shirtless Naruto doing crunches was not what he expected. He waved a greeting to the focused boy who gave a silent nod. Naruto watched as the man went off to do his daily morning routine. Would style the jutsu that the first Hokage used to subdue Kurama. Without a doubt, he's been assigned to keep watch over you someone high up thinks of you as a flight risk, Kurama said, lying down on his stomach and silently inspecting his claws. No kidding, Naruto said, rubbing his neck in annoyance, but who? He rhetorically asked, placing a hand on his chin. It's unlikely that it was Granny, but Kakashi might have suggested some kind of watch put over me. You're getting better at reading people, Kit. I too noticed how he's been acting these past few days after that mission. He likely thinks of you as some hormonal teenager, prone to making mistakes due to his anger issues. Well, the entire village has always considered me a flight risk, but that didn't stop them from actively shunning me, even though they knew, my emotions are what? Kurama watched his friend enter a trance as he contemplated various options. Naruto snapped his fingers, that's it. They want to weaken me emotionally so that way I'm easier to control. The pieces were laid out in front of me for over a decade and yet I didn't notice. Kurama silently acknowledged the assessment but huffed. You mentally locked away the part of you that had the most reasonable. Of course, you didn't notice. The large fox sputtered as a wave of water crashed into his face, getting in his snout and all over his fur. Bastard. He won't give me the answers I need because it might breach his mission. So I'll let things play out, the blonde mentally concluded, sitting up straight. 1000. His body was drenched in sweat from the morning exercise and he had to shudder at the sticky feeling his skin gave him. It appears you know wood style as well, eh, Naruto. Naruto snorted, walking past the brown-haired man and into the bathroom, ignoring the fit of laughter he heard behind him as he closed the door. Sakura rested her hands on her knees, looking over Sai's shoulder as the boy's hand danced over the sketchbook, ink pen in his hand. I never pegged you for the artistic type, she remarked, entranced by the fabulous display of handiwork. Sai halted his movements to turn his head, curious as to why the girl was taking a sudden interest in his craft. Looks, can be deceiving, the boy stated cryptically. Sakura lowered her head so that she was eye level with the boy, her ponytail bouncing as she did so. A small smile crept its way on her face. Don't I know it, she said with a chuckle. For someone so rough on the outside, you seem pretty sensitive on the inside. Sai immediately became alert upon seeing the facial expression the girl was making. That fake smile again, don't tell me you're gonna slug me again. He asked with a smile of his own. Sakura's face took on a more dangerous look as she smirked at him. Only if you give me a reason. I'll try not to, Sai immediately replied as the word sunk in. Sakura stood up straight and snickered. I'm only playing with you, she said in a lighter tone, still watching as the boy sketched. I would have thought being in a place like this would have you drawing a landscape, but this is a rather abstract piece of artwork, isn't it? What are you calling it? Sai looked over the drawing with a contemplative expression for a full second before putting on a fake smile once again. I don't know. Sakura raised an eyebrow, confused. You don't have a title for it, dot yet. She asked in confusion. Sai nodded. There is no title, at the odd response, Sakura urged him to elaborate. I mean, I've drawn thousands, if not tens of thousands of sketches over time, but I've never titled any of them. 
Sakura was still rather perplexed, even after the lengthy explanation. I thought all artists named their work, even if it's something simple to convey the thoughts, feelings, and emotions they felt and experienced while creating a piece. Sizing pen scratched the surface of the paper, the sound of its hypnotic movements preceding his next words. Honestly, he began with the same smile on his face, when I try to give them titles, nothing good comes to mind. Sakura cast the boy a confused glance. The right words, escape me, he breathed out, and I just don't feel anything. A breeze blew by the pair, causing the pages of Sai's sketchbook to flap gently. Maybe you need Sakura to slug you again so your brain can get rewired, came a brash voice, interrupting the conversation. The two turned their heads to see Naruto, hands in his pockets, leaning against a building nearby. Sakura gave the boy a harsh glare as he walked over, mad that he ruined what could have been more insight on their enigma of a teammate. Naruto's form loomed over Sai as his eyes trailed over the sketch on the current page, how do you feel about this drawing? Naruto asked, a serious look on his face. Sai's eyes dropped down to the paper and peered right back into Naruto's. Nothing it's nothing special. Naruto watched closely as the boy gingerly scooped up all of his material, not moving to help even as Sakura did so. He crouched down to pick up a book with a white-haired boy on top of it. Nothing special. The air around the trio displaced as a swirling fist-sized orb of lavender chakra found its place hovering over Naruto's palm. Sai tensed as the boy charged the attack. How would you feel if I destroyed this piece of art, right now? Sakura watched the scene with interest, choosing to see how the pale boy would react. Well, it is a work of art that belongs to my brother, so, I would feel. Naruto's eyelids closed shut as he let go of the attack. Tossing the book to its current owner, he began to walk away. The fact you had to think about it, means you would feel something. Some distance away, Yamato leaned on a tree, out of sight, listening in on the conversation. A small smile found its way on his face before he kicked off the tree, vanishing without a trace. Okay team, our goal, is a live capture. Yamato sat cross-legged on the wooden floor of his self-made shelter, watching his three companions closely to verify they were listening. Hearing no objections, he continued, the target must not be killed or injured, no matter the circumstance. In the case of the former, we lose valuable intelligence, therefore, making the mission that must harder than if it were a mere assault mission. Seeing that the teens were still following, he continued, due to the situation's delicacy, this must go off without a hitch. You three, will serve mainly as a backup, while I go ahead and attempt the capture by myself. Naruto's and Sakura's brows creased slightly at the information given, but either Yamato did not notice or ignored the detail, if my disguise is compromised, a battle is likely to ensue. In that case, shift to combat mode, on my signal. Teamwork is essential for this plan to work, meaning every warrior's action will be covered by their partner, as I divide us into pairs. Naruto leaned back on his hands, closing his eyes. I already know where this is going. Naruto and Sai will form squad 1, while Sakura is with me. It goes without saying we cannot have you injured due to being the team's only medic. Sai flashed Naruto a disarming smile, which was returned with a fanged grin. Sensing the growing tension, Yamato cleared his throat. Though this isn't standard procedure, half of tomorrow will be spent doing simulation exercises in pairs. Everything I know about you comes from your files, he stated, pointedly giving them all a stern look. Your battle style, skills, and the makeup of your jutsu, etc. will be assessed as such. The only way I'm going to form this team into a cohesive fighting unit will be through far less lax methods than that of Kakashi. Naruto sat on Captain Yamato's back, the man sweat dropping as the boy did so. The blonde fixed a hard stare on his partner, Sai. It's clear you don't understand the concept of camaraderie, he said, glaring at the pale boy. The dark-haired boy stood still as a kunai pierced the scroll he was holding, etching itself into a tree far away, the word comrade inscribed on it. Placing his palm on Yamato's back, the boy stood. And I'll never consider you one of mine until you do, he said in a cold tone, the ground crunching beneath his feet as he stalked off. What a strong variation of the paralysis seal. That wasn't even in his files. Clearly, the best course of action when someone is far more competent than you is to stand by until given a signal to jump in. Seeing as you are more adept in combat than I, it would be fruitless for me to step in. Seeing the blonde walk right past him, he continued to give his two cents. 
Yamato dragged a palm down his face, not liking where the situation was going at all. Sakura bit her lip as the next words that came out of Sai's mouth were. I wonder what Sasuke would have done in this scenario. Would he have fought alongside you, covering you? Somehow, I doubt it. The same fake smile was on the boy's face as he spoke, ignoring the temperature drop that came through the clearing. He fixed his eyes on Naruto's back as the boy walked away, believing he hadn't made his point yet. He betrayed our village and tried to kill you. And yet, you still consider him a comrade. Yes, Naruto stated flatly, still facing his back to the pale boy, and I would do anything to save him, he said with finality in his voice. His jacket blew wildly as a gust of wind passed through the forest, shaking the trees, emitting a low whistled sound as the leaves rustled. Naruto turned his head to face the boy, an apathetic look on his face laced with restrained fury. Even if it means teaming up with you, Naruto turned around and began walking once again, before stopping mid-stride. This obsession with Sasuke, Sai, don't, it's absurd, the pale boy stated, ignoring the pinket's warning. The boy had to shield his eyes from the fierce winds that blew in his face, causing debris to fly into his eyes as he blinked away tears of pain. Naruto thinks of Sasuke as a brother, Sakura stated, looking the boy straight in the eye, you must know how that feels, right? Did you not listen earlier? As I said before, I don't have feelings. Sakura gave him a disbelieving look. So should Naruto destroy your book? She let the sentence hang. She received no response but a blank-faced smile. The boy's eyes were shut so she was unable to tell how he was truly feeling towards the issue if he could at all. In her peripheral, she saw Naruto walk up to a tree, placing his hand on it with his head bowed. He's your brother. You have to feel something, at her prying, Sai turned his head and offered her the same eerie fake smile. I meant exactly what I said. Sakura watched on, yards away, as Naruto's fingernails dug into the tree, creating deep gashes in the oak along with a sickening grating sound. A sudden memory flashed in her mind of a much younger Naruto walking beside his best friend, their backs facing her. At this, her anger flared, her face twisting into a scowl for only a fraction of a second before she composed herself. Even so, you have a brother, so you must be able to imagine, even a little, what it would feel like to lose him. Sai hummed in thought. Well, you see, my brother is dead, the boy said, emphasizing the last word. A bead of sweat trickled down Sakura's face as a confused look graced her features. That's even more of a reason to feel something, the girl was immediately cut off. And what face would I make to show that I did? One like that. At first, she mentally questioned the statement but looked to see an expression of self-loathing on Naruto's face as he balanced himself on the tree. Her scowl returned full force as she heard the boy's next words. Well, when my brother died, I didn't know what kind of expression I was supposed to be making. Dot can we just go already? Naruto piped up with an exasperated look. Yamato voiced his assent, clapping his hands to gain Sai and Sakura's attention. My thoughts exactly. We're falling behind schedule, so everyone grabs your packs, the captain said with his arms folded. Sakura glared at the black-haired teen, her emerald eyes shining dangerously as she spoke. Lucky you, Sai. I was just about to give you another beating. It's one thing to badmouth Sasuke, I already warned you about that the only reason I didn't knock your lights out was because of Naruto's statement earlier if we want to save Sasuke. You're a valuable asset that we can't afford to lose. Sai listened carefully as the girl spoke, even with the disinterested look he gave her. But badmouth Naruto again, the ground beneath the two cracked from the pressure being exerted, causing Sai to blink, God and I won't be so forgiving. Sai chose now to speak, I really don't understand how such feelings come about being considerate of one's feelings, I presume. But, there was something in this book. If we're not in place before noon tomorrow, the mission is over before it even starts, Naruto interjected with impatience lacing his tone. Wood creaking could be heard as Tenchi Bridge swayed from side to side from the harsh winds. The wooden puppet body of Sasori's Hiroko slowly trudged along the bridge, meeting at the center with a hooded figure. Sasori, the cloaked figure began, tugging at the hood's fabric, dot how time flies. Kabuto Yakushi, came the disguised voice of Captain Yamato. In a hiding spot in the brush, far away, Sakura held back her shock. So, he actually arrived. The hooded form of Kabuto swayed his head from side to side, making sure no one had followed him or noticed his departure. No tail. Sasori, 
asked in as intimidating a tone as possible. None, I assure you, the bespectacled man replied in a subservient tone. A look of apprehension flashed on his face. After exchanging pleasantries and meaningless banter, Sasori, cut right to the chase. Sasuke Uchiha, where does he reside? Kabuto cast a worried glance to the forest behind him, an uneasy smile on his face. Yamato chalked this up to paranoia but didn't lower his guard for even a moment. This bastard is faking, I can see it in his fucking face. Naruto narrowed his eyes, pupils dashing from side to side as he glared between the two conversing men. Kabuto inhaled sharply. There are several hideouts, but these change every week or so, for his location to remain inconspicuous. Some are in the lands outside the sound, ones which Orochimaru's spies have procured for us. In general, however, there is no set transfer plan or pattern. We're currently lying low at a safe house on a small island in the northern lake, but we'll be moving in three days. Yamato took in the divulged info with a stoic demeanor on the outside, while he mentally filed away everything and dissected it to see if it all pieced together properly. Sasuke Uchiha is also there right now. A sudden rustling in the bushes caught Kabuto's attention, causing him to hastily throw a kanai at the location, to reveal a rabbit scurrying away from any other signs of danger. Look, this is taking too long. If Orochimaru discovers I met with you, death will be the least of my worries. Yamato inwardly panicked at the direction the situation had taken. You know what I want, now give it to me, the man said, putting out his arm in a receiving gesture. Sasori, fumbled around, his cloak shifting around as he retrieved the item. Revealing a kanai in his grip, Kabuto, alarmed at first, took notice of a large snake, coiling itself around his waist, a tall black-haired man standing back to back with him. He's been followed. Interesting conversation, hissed the pale-faced newcomer with serpentine, yellow eyes. The man's appearance immediately alarmed Kabuto, his eyes going white as he froze in fear, mind if I join you. Orochimaru watched with a predatory gaze as, Sasori, and Kabuto leapt backward, skidding across the surface of the unsteady suspension bridge. Your garb brings back such memories, Sasori. Yamato listened as the man rambled on about Kabuto's purpose as one of his henchmen, the grotesque description of what he did with the corpses he obtained causing him to shudder. I can't take him on alone but calling on the others runs the risk of putting them in danger. The man's thinking was cut short as a glowing green hand in the form of a knife made its way towards his wooden husk, which he wasn't able to dodge in time. However, instead of hearing the sound of wood snapping, he heard the sound of a bone-breaking snap, followed by a cry of. Boom. The bridge shook as the explosion ensued, and Yamato looked through the eyeholes of his disguise to see none other than Didera, in all his glory, standing in front of him with his hand in the half ram seal. My man, Sasori, you were really about to let this trash put an end to your eternal art. Pathetic, hem. Kabuto, who is now in line with Orochimaru, looked on in confusion as the Akatsuki duo presented themselves. Kabuto was healing his limp arm, which Naruto had broken when blocking the strike made towards Yamato. Didera, eh? Rather, a new addition to the organization, Orochimaru hissed out, a look of contemplation on his features. To this statement, Didera smirked. Not quite. An explosion even larger than the last ensued, causing the bridge to sway back and forth, a small crating forming at the center, wooden parts flying about in every direction. Yamato emerged from the husk of his puppet to ease his movements, landing softly as he did so. As he collected himself, assessing the situation, he flashed a two-fingered signal, Sai and Sakura presented themselves right in front of him. They stared down their opponents on the other side of the bridge, who both had condescending smirks on their faces. Orochimaru hid his shock at the perfect use of the practical transformation jutsu, combined with the offensive exploding shadow clone. Yamato could now clearly see the back of his blonde companion, his untamed mane of golden hair swaying in the wind. Quite hasty, aren't we, Kabuto, Naruto said in a low tone. The silver-haired medic had a small smile on his face, the haughtiness palpable, even at a distance. You again, Kabuto replied. As Orochimaru spoke, Naruto's face twisted into a cruel grin, his fangs reaching his lower lip and drawing blood as his teeth gnashed together. Now isn't this quite the pleasant reunion? You've brought the Nine Tails child. How the Sanin referred to Naruto has caused a vein to bulge on the boy's temple. Excellent, I've been waiting for an opportunity to see which one is stronger now. Naruto, the boy growled upon hearing his name mentioned by the snake Sanin, 
or Sasuke. The man's tongue traced his lips as he stared tantalizingly at his test subject for his current hypothesis. Don't talk about us as if we're some fucking experiments, Naruto hissed in a guttural tone, wisps of red chakra in the shape of tails swirling around him, denting the metal frames holding up the bridge. The boy crouched, his feet digging deep into the wooden tiles of the bridge from the density of the chakra exerted. A split second later, Orochimaru found a fist courtesy of Naruto sending him flying several hundreds of yards into the forest. The pale-skinned man crashed through dozens of trees, uprooting a vast majority of the forest as he got flung back. Quickly coming to his master's aid, Kabuto, using his chakra scalpel technique, slashed through the now still Naruto's back, watching with a smirk as a deep gash found itself in the boy's skin, blood oozing out in a gushing mess. A sinister glint of light flashed across the lenses of Kabuto's glasses, but the mischievous smirk he had on his face vanished when he saw Naruto give a grin of his own. The man quickly shielded his face with a cross-armed block, an explosion sending him several feet back, singing his unprotected arms and destroying his glasses in the process. An exploding clone. Not finished just yet, Naruto appeared behind the medic, kicking him at an angle in the center of his back, another Naruto appearing above the man in a puff of smoke, hands set in an axe strike. The clone smashed its hands on top of the man's skull, sending him crashing down into the bridge, forming a small crater. Gravity quickly took over, as the Naruto clone fell directly on Kabuto, using both knees to cause more damage and for the man to get sent down through the bridge and into the ravine below. Crashing into the water headfirst, Kabuto spat out a large amount of blood, losing feeling from the waist down as his limp body floated down the river. He's not even using the nine tails. Yamato thought in awe. Looking at the hole in the bridge and casting a glance down below, the man held back a wince. The display of speed and strength far surpassed that of his own, which was saying. Much, considering he was right beneath Kakashi in skill. Naruto watched with interest as Sai flew overhead on a large bird made of ink. The boy bit his thumb and flashed through a series of seals. A large cloud of smoke appeared, dispersing to reveal a human-sized orange toad in a blue vest. Kichi, you know what to do. With this simple statement, the toad nodded his head, wrapping up the boy with its large tongue. Gamakichi then whirled around once or twice to build momentum before releasing Naruto, sending the boy several hundreds of feet into the sky. What are we waiting for? Sakura shouted, taking off in a mad dash. Let's go after them. She yelled, causing Yamato to snap out of his thoughts, following closely behind. The scale of battle we're about to see only happens once a decade. Orochimaru crouched on a branch, nursing the large bruise on his cheek, chuckling all the while. To do so much damage even without using the Kyubi's power, a sickening crack was heard as Orochimaru's jaw snapped two hands emerging from his mouth. They quickly tore apart the man to reveal another, unscathed Orochimaru, with a coating of vile green liquid all over his body. He may be on the same level as Sasuke, the man said, licking his lips. A snake hiding in the grass huh, Naruto thought, his hair flying in his face as he turned his head from side to side, looking over the dense collection of trees. Reaching his high point, he started to feel the signs of descent and flashed through a set of seals. Time to use this new jutsu. Wind style, callous windstorm. With that cry, a strong gust of wind surrounded Naruto, not only slowing his descent but tearing up the landscape as a vicious hurricane tore up the surrounding area. Trees were uprooted and cut to shreds, sounds of destruction filling the area and replacing the wide expanse of the forest with a large crater, nearly a mile in diameter and dozens of feet deep. Sai, who had been flying far above the storm, got caught up in the attack, causing his bird to dispel in a burst of ink, showering the ground below. Quickly, the boy pulled out his scroll and brought forth another avian creature made of ink. Sakura and Yamato, who had been doing their best to catch up to the battle, were blown far back by the windstorm, shielding their arms with their eyes to prevent debris from flying into their faces, but obscuring their vision in the process, causing them to miss a fully healed Kabuto hiding through the destruction, closing in on their location to observe their movements. This is ridiculous. Sakura cried as her body flew through the air, Yamato's thoughts mirroring her words. How much chakra does he have to be able to produce and attack this destructive? Yamato glanced towards the girl as their bodies approached the ground at a fast pace. At this point, Naruto's chakra reserves are near unquantifiable, the brown-haired man thought with wonder. 
Naruto landed softly in the center of the crater, his wind jutsu providing him a far more bearable landing than was expected. Across from him was the cut-up, mangled, and bloody form of Orochimaru, who painfully regurgitated a second, clean body in a sickening display of rebirth. Without warning, a horde of snakes emerged from the man's mouth, a wave of the serpents slithering their way towards the blonde and spitting out acid. If you would, Naruto's words were met with a sinister toothy grin. With pleasure. With a flick of Naruto's wrist, a burst of chakra was expelled that kicked up a large collection of dirt and debris, a massive gust of wind making its way towards Orochimaru. Naruto watched on with mild interest as a cloud of dust formed, obscuring the Sanin's body from view. Naruto's form was now coated in a dense, bubbling red cloak of chakra, his eyes taking on their menacing crimson color with the intimidating pair of black slits. The dangerous gust of wind pillaged forward, killing the entire wave of snakes swiftly, causing bits of snakeskin to fell to the ground. Acid rain poured down onto the boy's body, but due to the chakra cloak, he remained unaffected. A sound similar to that of water was heard as a thick tail of chakra formed behind the boy, waving around in impatience. The silhouette of Orochimaru's body made itself known as his head emerged from the cloud of dust. Naruto stood completely still, allowing the Sani, whose lower body extended like that of a snake, to approach him at great speeds. Orochimaru deftly dodged a fist to the face in the form of an extended chakra arm, slithering around the appendage in a spiral-like pattern. His body then started to become singed by the potent chakra, causing steam to emit from his clothing. To counter this, another Orochimaru made its way out of the man's mouth, extending his arms for a strike as he got closer to the boy. Orochimaru's fist crashed into Naruto's cheek, the impact of the attack causing the ground beneath them to crack, bursting open. But instead of getting the desired effect of sending him soaring, he watched in fascination as the boy stood his ground, straining to turn his head with the man's fist deep in his cheek. The crimson slitted orbs of Naruto's met with Orochimaru's golden ones. After the second long stare down, Naruto's hand lashed out, tearing Orochimaru in half. As the top half of the man's body was sent sky high, a copious amount of snakes emerged from both halves, coiling together in an interesting display. Naruto leapt back and watched as the man's body essentially stitched itself back together through the use of snakes. A sickening squelch was heard as the man's body successfully mended itself. Naruto did not choose to wait for his next attack, using a snap kick to break the man's neck. Orochimaru's body twisted around, doing a 360 degrees spin. Using the boy's shock against him, Orochimaru attempted to catch him off guard with a spinning back-handed fist. Naruto saw this coming, and just in time, caught the outstretched hand, tearing the man's entire arm off. In the process, as soon as his feet touched the ground, he sprung up and crashed his knee into the Sanin's chin, sending the man soaring, his snake body still in range. Grabbing the man's snake-like torso, he spun the man around before aiming him towards the sky, watching as the body left the ground and ascended into the upper part of the atmosphere. Orochimaru retched out yet another body from his mouth, watching from his position in the sky as the blonde stared him down. What do you wish to accomplish by glaring at me, boy? The man hissed out. He watched as the boy crouched low, a red swirling orb of chakra with wisps of flames licked its surface forming in the palm of his hand. His eyes widened when Naruto sprung up, a look of utmost seriousness on his face, closing in on him at an unfathomable speed. The Sanin groaned as the orb of fire made contact with his stomach, causing the man to cough up a thick cloud of black smoke. He choked on the sulfur-like taste for a couple of seconds before realizing that his body was slowly being set on fire, Naruto's sinister grin fading as the boy descended back down to earth. Fire style, Rasengan, the boy whispered as he fell to the ground with a crash on all fours. Orochimaru grit his teeth in pain, the feeling of his insides being scorched and turned to ash causing him to cough up blood. Orochimaru's body fell to the ground in a heap, a small crater forming beneath him. His arms were sprawled out, his chest rising and falling rapidly as his breathing became erratic. For the fourth and final time, a second Orochimaru emerged from the man's mouth this time looking far worse for wear, haggard, and unsteady on his feet. Some distance away, from behind a tree that was still standing, Sai watched the events play out, biding his time. So, who are we hiding from? The hushed voice startled Sai out of his trance, causing him to leap up to a branch high above. 
He looked down to see the calm visage of Naruto, staring right at him with a small smile. Well, your prey is making his escape, Sai pointed out to the boy who remained motionless. Naruto glanced to the side, and out of the corner of his eye, several yards away, he saw Orochimaru, metaphorically, slithering, out of his grasp. That's what we want him to do, the blonde responded apathetically. Sai narrowed his eyes at the boy, who continued to stare at him impassively. Naruto nodded his head in the direction of the retreating Sani, which Sai took as a signal to pursue. So, Donzo's pet, essentially, came a soft reply from the other side of the hot spring fence. Naruto leaned against the fence, his bare back shivering from the feel of the wooden surface. A heavy sigh escaped his lips as his mind sifted through the information given. My guess, came the voice of Sakura over the fence, is that he has intel on mission parameters as well as results. What other reason would he have for finding out that we had a potential rendezvous with Orochimaru? The girl ran a hand through her damp pink hair, using a hair tie to put it back in its regular ponytail. So, basically he has an ulterior motive by assigning Sai to our squad. Not only does he wish to keep the Jinchuriki in check, but he must want something from Warochimaru. The boy fiddled with the crystal hanging around his neck. Why is it that a Konoha higher up would want to side with someone like that snake bastard anyway? He inquired with a puzzled look. The pinket sighed. From what I assessed from an interaction I saw between him and Lady Tsunade, he has very militaristic views on how Konoha should be run and most likely abhors the logic behind the will of fire. Sakura stood up, stretching as she finished her explanation, groaning in satisfaction from the feel of her bones popping. Naruto gnashed his teeth together in anger. More people to make my life difficult, the boy said, dragging a hand down his face in exasperation. A fist made contact with the top of his skull, causing his head to bow down. Slightly agitated, he raised his head to see the frowning face of Sakura staring down at him arms draped over the fence, only visible from the chin up. Stop with that pessimistic talk. Wasn't it you who was berating me the other day for doing the same thing? The girl chided, causing Naruto's eyes to droop low. You're right, he admitted with a wistful sigh, but shit always gets complicated when I'm involved, or, my furry friend, rather, he said, absently placing a hand on the seal on his stomach. Sakura smiled at the boy's sense of humor, deciding to slink back to her side of the hot springs. Well, glad you're out of that mini funk you just put yourself in, she stated as her feet splashed on the partially wet ground. Naruto pushed off of the fence with his foot, silently thanking his teammate for the talk, as well as the input. Case in point, we keep a close eye on. Dot Sai, Naruto flashed through a set of hand signs, his body becoming transparent before turning completely invisible. He discreetly leaned against a tree as he watched Sai approach Orochimaru, the boy standing a reasonable distance away from the dangerous Sani. As the two began to converse, his sensitive hearing picked up the conversation, even as he stood several dozens of yards away from the pair. That senile old geezer's still alive, and you're his new errand boy, I presume. Orochimaru asked in a very lax tone. Out with it then, he stated impatiently, what does he want from me? Sai responded to the Sanin using his signature faux smile. The message I bring is of the utmost importance, Orochimaru, he began politely, attempting to put the man at ease, Danzo says. If I were you, errand boy, Orochimaru interrupted in a predatory tone, his mouth twisting into a frown, I'd choose my words wisely, his voice became dangerously low, presuming you value your life, Sai's expression did not falter for even a split second as he calmly responded. I am only allowed to relay as Danzo instructed. If that meets with your displeasure, by all means, do as you please. A tense silence ensued, the only sound filling the area being the ominous wind passing by. A katana flew through the air, the sound of its piercing flesh overtaking the wind. You really don't know manners, Orochimaru began, his tongue hanging out of his mouth as he took in the sight of Sai's wounded body and shocked facial expression, do you? His eyes remained unsurprised as the boy's body burst into a puddle of ink, splattering all over the ground. The katana fell with a clang, transforming into a snake, hissing as it coiled around Orochimaru's leg, slithering up into its sheath with a menacing hiss. A crack formed in the ground, opening to reveal Sai's real body, sticking out of the ground like a mole. When addressing someone of superior rank, proper etiquette dictates you face them directly, Orochimaru lectured with a patronizing smile. 
Naruto watched from his hiding spot as Sai emerged from the ground, attempting to reach into his pack as Orochimaru requested a reason for trusting him. As Sai's hand shuffled around inside of the pack, he quickly found himself face first in the dirt, courtesy of Kabuto pouncing on top of him, Kanai in his right hand his forearm forcefully dug into the boy's neck. What's going on here? The man asked with the weapon pointed right at Sai's temple. He glared at an envelope that had fallen out of the boy's hand, several feet in front of them. You can relax, Kabuto, Orochimaru placated, we may have just increased our ranks by one. The silver-haired medic remained silent, contemplating his master's words. Can we really trust him? Sai chose to answer the man's question rather than wait for Orochimaru's response. In that envelope is a note from Danzo for you. Read it and see for yourself. The paper crinkled as a pale hand picked it up, opening it to read its contents. This is, Orochimaru began cryptically, Kabuto, let that child up. Orochimaru readily ignored the questioning glance made by his assistant. The man's grip on the kanai wavered, as he slowly moved it away from the boy's head. We're taking him with us, Orochimaru said with finality in his voice. Hearing the commanding tone, the boy quickly removed himself from the boy's back, allowing him to move freely again. Sai, is it? The Sanin asked the boy as he stood. Receiving a nod, the three disappeared using the body flicker technique, vanishing from sight. Just as we expected, came the voice of Yamato, standing beside the translucent figure of Naruto, who had his arms crossed, an unreadable expression on his face. Sakura, perched on a branch directly above him, dropped down in front of him, giving a knowing smirk, which the boy quickly returned with his own. Game time. You should probably pick up Sai's book before we tail them, Naruto stated, walking right past the boy's belongings, scouring the area for clues as to which direction the trio had gone. Ah, you really care for his. Feelings don't you, the girl teased, dodging a lazy roundhouse, courtesy of the now annoyed blonde. Now, now, you two, save the banter for after we complete the mission. For now, Naruto, what did you get out of the conversation? The boy grunted before responding. From what I understand, Sai gave Orochimaru a letter for Danzo, and whatever the contents of it were, piqued Orochimaru's interest. I say this because he not only told Kabuto to refrain from restraining him, but he took him along to his lair as well. Yamato put a finger on his chin in thought, brain going through a myriad of possibilities as to what the envelope may have said. A finger snap halted his thinking. It must have something to do with human experimentation, if I had to take a guess, something that could expedite the acquirement of Sasuke's body. Yamato blinked twice at the girl's explanation, somewhat agreeing with the educated guess, but what? Think about it, came the deep voice of Naruto, crouched down with his palm on the soil, a concentrated look on his face, what is it that Orochimaru wants the most? The boy nodded as he ground the dirt between his fingers. The Sharingan, Sakura immediately concluded, a look of understanding on her face, do you think it's possible? Let's not jump to conclusions, Yamato interjected. While the possibility has presented itself, it would be far too presumptuous for us to suspect a Konoha elder of treachery. It's not far-fetched, Naruto interrupted, standing as he stared down the Anbu commander. Why are we in this scenario in the first place? He asked sardonically. Yamato bowed his head, realizing the stupidity in his statement. All we need is more imposing evidence for now. Let's stick to tracking down Sai. Let's not forget the original mission. With the latter statement made, Naruto's face took on a dark look, catching Yamato by surprise and making Sakura grow serious. So what we've gathered is that Danzo is likely using Sai to carry out some top secret mission. Realistically, Yamato lowered his tone to accentuate the situation's severity. Danzo may be plotting to destroy Konoha, he said in a voice that hinted foreboding. Neither Naruto nor Sakura looked surprised in the slightest, merely nodding their heads in agreement with the proclamation. It's possible that he is conspiring with Orochimaru to overthrow Tsunade. And after the current regime has fallen, he would renovate the villages he sees fit, thus taking place as Hokage, Sakura concluded with a distressed look. Naruto cast her an unreadable glance before he shifted his focus on Yamato, who continued where the pink had left off. He's likely making his move right now because seeing Orochimaru's prior invasion failure, he feels he is in a superior position in terms of negotiation. So Sai is a conduit for Orochimaru and Danzo, is basically what you're saying, Naruto deduced, 
Sakura and Yamato deadpanned at the curt way of putting it. What? Well, Yamato said, sweat dropping, let's be on our way. Clearly, that forged corpse was a distraction, Naruto absently said, a blur of brown and green passing him by as he sped through the trees, Sakura and Yamato on either side of him. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Sakura using one hand to swing from branch to branch, size picture book in the other. Her eyes were glued to the contents of the book, yet she didn't stumble a single time, speeding through the trees with trained grace and agility. There's a pattern to these drawings, Sakura cryptically remarked, her expression growing more and more concerned as she read on. Her pupils moved erratically from side to side as she scanned the pages with an intellectual voracity, and what's really odd is that. Sai said this book belonged to his older brother, yet these are clearly drawings he himself made. Naruto cast the girl a curious glance out of the corner of his eye. So you mean to tell me you analyzed his art style after less than a day of even knowing it was a hobby of his? He asked in an unbelieving tone. Sakura glared at the boy for a split second, causing him to turn his sight forward. Point taken. The girl placed her hand on a thick tree branch, using chakra to stick to it, and as momentum carried her forwards, she swung around it, doing a full 360. Letting go, she propelled herself several dozen yards forward, her feet skidding across the grass as she landed. Check this out, she said, coming to a halt. Her male companions dropped beside her to see what the girl was referring to. Flipping through the pages, it was evident that a story was being told. From left to right, and right to left, intersecting at the center. It followed a character that resembled Sai on one page, while intimidating enemies occupied the other. Each weapon the enemy used, Sai would acquire upon defeating them, and in chronological order, he would steal their clothing, equipment, etc. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Is it symbolic or is it meant to be literal? Naruto asked aloud, leaning on the girl for balance as he studied the book intently. Sai looked at his reflection in the stream, cupping a good amount of water in his hands before splashing it on his face, sighing as the cool refreshing cooled him down. Orochimaru sat on a rock nearby, observing the boy in the corner of his eye while conversing with Kabuto. His golden eyes trailed the pale boy as he fumbled with his bag, frantically looking and failing to find something. It's missing. Something the matter, Sai. The Sanin asked the boy, confused with the emotionless boy's breaking of character. Receiving a shake of the head, Kabuto suggested the group continued moving. Sai hastily nodded, a hidden sadness in his eyes as his face fell. The centerfold is very out of place, Sakura remarked, narrowing her eyes at the drawing of Sai. The boy was garbed in standard Konoha Anbu attire, part of his arm cut off at the center, where his hand was meant to be. It looks like he was meant to be holding hands with someone, Yamato stated, mentally concluding something before Naruto gave his two cents. Most likely his brother, he stated, moving away from the pair as they continued to stare at the unfinished drawing. Sakura flipped the book upside down, pointing to the covers on both sides. So, a story of two brothers, each boy's adventure starting on separate paths, starting with the cover at the end and going inward. One side being that of a boy who defeats various enemies, taking their weapons and armor like spoils of war, amassing new knowledge and wisdom through each passing battle, Naruto's head perked up as he detached himself from the conversation, uninterested. Dot the centerfold was meant to be Sai and his brother, together. New intel has been gathered, Naruto said with a smirk. Sakura's eyes widened at the statement, while Yamato nodded, a stoic look on his face. You don't mean. She began in a disbelieving tone, quickly placing the book into her pouch for later. Naruto's smirk widened into a vicious grin. Orochimaru's hideout has been detected. It's crunch time. Orochimaru's hideout. A large snake's head formed from rock had its intimidating visage accentuated by the lowly burning candles that replaced its pupils, casting an ominous glow in the darkroom. In front of the snake's closed mouth sat a lone figure, hunched over with one foot touching the ground while the other rested on the elevated surface, the shadows provided by the statue behind him. Cast shadows over his form, obscuring his facial features from view, leaving only two, half-lidded eyes revealing blood-red irises, three comma-shaped marks surrounding the pupil in a clockwise formation. You're late, came a disembodied voice, sounding oddly familiar with a change in octave. Three pairs of footsteps immediately halted several feet in front of the impatient figure. My jutsu is almost complete, and you said you would help me in honing it, Orochimaru. 
The name was spat out with so much distaste that the snake Sanin's medical assistant piped up, defending the man's dignity. If I were you, boy, he began with equally as much disgust, I'd take a more respectful tone. Enough, Kabuto, the Sanin interrupted, our efforts today have been rewarded with a little gift. A small smile crept its way on his face. Someone for our friend here to reminisce with, a shinobi from his dear Kanahagakur, the figure trained its Sharingan eyes on the new arrival, Sai. Sasuke Uchiha, even as the raven-haired boy trained a cold stare onto him, Sai offered a disarming smile, starting to speak in as amicable a tone as possible. So you're the legendary Sasuke Uchiha. I'm Sai, nice to meet. Get lost. If Sai was surprised that he was cut off by the brash remark, he didn't show it. He inclined his head slightly as he spoke his next words. No matter how much I smile, everyone seems to dislike me right away. He paused for dramatic effect, even Naruto. A pair of Sharingan eyes blankly stared at the pale boy, not blinking even once. I can already tell you're nothing like him, he continued, Orochimaru watching on with interest while Kabuto remained passive. I have a feeling you and I will get along just fine. Sasuke's previously narrowed eyes widened a small fraction, and in doing so, Sai found himself in an abstract landscape, an innumerable amount of odd shapes filling the area and contorting his view letting him know he had been ensnared in a rather formidable Uchiha Genjutsu. Sai gasped out a sharp breath, his butt making contact with the floor as he lost balance. Raising a gloved hand to his face, the boy wiped his face with the back of his hand, making note of the perspiration on the glove's fabric. I'm sweating, the boy mentally exclaimed. His hand lowered to the ground as he pushed himself back up. I have no emotions. I feel nothing, and yet, just by meeting his eyes, I somehow fear Sasuke from the bottom of a heart I thought I didn't have. Orochimaru berated the boy for trying Sasuke's temper, which the former Anbu member mentally noted. He's more difficult than I am, the Sanin admitted. I don't care about him, Sasuke flatly stated, mimicking the boy's actions, standing up. Come on Orochimaru, let's go. Naruto's been pretty hush-hush about you, but in a book I read, from what I can deter by viewing his actions, he cares a lot about you. Sai, not knowing whether or not the boy was listening, continued, These last three years, he's trained a lot in hopes of reaching you in a literal sense in terms of power. As a matter of fact, he's been searching for you this whole time. Oh yeah, the Uchiha said emotionlessly, got him. Sai's eyes narrowed the slightest bit at the boy's detached tone. Let's go, Orochimaru, he repeated. Naruto thinks of you as a brother, or so Sakura says. This elicited the most reaction he anticipated out of the boy. The only brother I have, I want to kill. Saying his piece, Sasuke vanished, leaving behind only a wisp of smoke. Orochimaru, planning to join the boy, handed Kabuto the envelope he obtained from Sai. He silently exited the room soon after. The silver-haired medic's eyes widened as he read the files inside. A copy of the register of Black Ops members directly assigned to the Hokage and it seems authentic, he said, looking over the assortment of pictures and important documents. You, he said, addressing Sai, come with me. Naruto lazily spun a key around his finger before crushing it in his hand. As he opened up his palm, small wisps of smoke faded away. All right, he said, nonchalantly leaning up against the wall of Sai's holding cell, start talking. Danzo plans to overthrow the current Hokage, doesn't he? Getting straight to the point, a cloud of smoke appeared behind Sai, dispersing to reveal a clone of Naruto, holding a kunai up against the boy's neck, and don't spare us any details. Rather hostile, aren't we? The boy asked with a small smile. Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato patiently waited for the boy to relay the information regarding Danzo. A full minute of silence ensued. Unexpectedly, the one to break it was not Naruto with a brash set of words, but rather Sai, who as a meek tone began to speak. My assignment was to find an opportunity to approach Orochimaru and entice him to help destroy Konoha. The trio listened closely as the boy spoke, sparing Naruto glances to see how he reacted. The blonde stood completely still, leaning against the wall with a bored look on his face, arms folded over his chest. I was also ordered to secretly report back Orochimaru's activities to Lord Danzo. In short, to act as his spy. You're toying with fire, here, Sakura stated in a dangerous tone. Enter a conspiracy with Orochimaru while playing him at the same time. She shook her head, letting out a heavy sigh. Well, 
if Konoha did fall, we expected Orochimaru's eventual betrayal. So in other words, this was your way of obtaining the upper hand. Sakura received a curt nod as a response to her question, and you were tasked with setting this all into motion, why? Because of my set of skills, the intelligence I write in ink can transform itself into little creatures that can defend themselves whilst traveling, Yamato watched as the girl's face became distressed. If Konoha falls, many people will die. Do you understand the consequences of what you're doing? Sai's answer to her question shook the occupants of the room. Well, I'm just following orders. Sai ignored Naruto's face, which formed into a meaner scowl the more he talked. Sai, how could? Oh, and Sai is just a name, a title if you will. I was given it for this mission. I'm actually, nobody. Naruto's brows furrowed, his eyes flashing between red and blue. I am merely an extension of Lord Donzo's will. I myself do not exist. Therefore, it's useless to say anything to me. A sharp exhale escaped Naruto's nostrils, the blonde attempting to calm himself down. Sai ignored him while Sakura turned her head to see the reason for his exaggerated breath. Then why to carry around that picture book? He asked, nodding to the Pinket, who retrieved the aforementioned item from her pouch. He received no immediate response. The two boys on the covers are you and your brother, right? You hang onto it because it's the only thing that proves you actually do exist. Sai offered the girl a questioning glance. You're not as emotionless as you'd have everyone believe, she stated, her features softening. Not even Shinobi can cut off their feelings completely. How does possessing this book translates into proving my existence? The sound of head scratching was heard as Naruto spoke up. You're really a dumbass, aren't you? He stated, more than asked, dragging a hand down the side of his face to show his annoyance. Sakura took this as a note to answer for him. Because abandoning it means abandoning your identity as a brother, he looked the boy directly in his eyes, emerald meeting. With coal black, it's something you just can't bring yourself to do, why? Sai waited for the girl to answer the rhetorical question, soaking in her words like a sponge. Because your bond with your older brother still matters to you it's that important. Sai's eyes widened at the statement, an influx of emotions dancing across his face. Removing the kunai from the boy's neck, the Naruto clone dispelled. Soon after, the original kicked off the wall, facing the door of the cell. Relation, ship. Yamato spoke up for the first time in the conversation. Sorry, but we flipped through your picture book. The centerfold is the only illustration that's incomplete. A look of exclamation flashed in Sai's eyes, noticed by both Sakura and Yamato. By the flow of the visual narrative, from core to cover, it seems the next logical battle would be with your brother. The squad captain paused to take a breath. Sai, I know you're from the Foundation. You've received special training from Danzo to kill all emotions evil exercises similar to that which used to be practiced in Karigakur, the village of Bloody Mist. Yamato took another pause, ignoring the shocked glance Sakura cast him. So, did you do it? Did you kill your brother? No. Sai half shouted, half whispered, signifying the most emotion the group heard out of the boy. Not expecting to be cut off by the quiet boy, Yamato remained silent as he continued. This book, it was supposed to be a gift, but just before I completed it, he died of, an illness, a smile was on his face, even as he said all of this, unnerving Sakura and proving Yamato's suspicions. We may not have been related by blood, but he was the closest thing to family I ever had. There are a lot of children from families torn apart by warfare in the foundation. My brother treated me like a real sibling. Naruto turned his head slightly, his lips twitching as he heard the boy speak. This picture book what I wanted to show him the most was the final centerfold, but after he died, I couldn't remember what I had been planning to draw. Captain, I don't think we must tie him up he's an ally. At Naruto's words, Yamato's jaw fell open. He gaped confusedly at the boy, ushering him to explain. Sai, who had not yet been restrained, gave Naruto a shocked stare. We can't reach Sasuke without him. If I remember correctly, my words were very clear, the blonde stated, scratching behind his ear. I'd do anything to save him, even if it means teaming up with you. And what if he doesn't want to be rescued? Sai asked, staring at the ground to avoid Naruto's narrowed eyes. Sakura had a look of confusion on her face, not comprehending what the boy was suggesting. I actually got to meet him, and he said you mean nothing to him, regardless of whether or not you see him as a brother, so, why? Why stand up to the likes of Orochimaru and risk your own life to save someone who doesn't want to be saved? 
It's not like anyone's ordering you to. Naruto squinted his eyes, a small smile on his face as he responded. When I first met Sasuke, I hated him, but at the same time, I also really enjoyed being around him cause he really accepted me more than anyone else. Sai absently stared at the picture book in his hand, shifting between looking at Naruto and the white-haired boy on the cover. I'm doing this because Sasuke is my friend, and that's a bond that can't be broken ever. End of discussion. Sai's eyes widened as a bandaged hand reached out to him, waiting to be grabbed. Now, are you going to join us or sit here tied up? Which is why he was surprised when a spiraling blue orb of chakra formed in the blonde boy's palm, said blonde vanishing from sight, a figure fell from the sky, alerting the group and causing them to jump back, watching as the figure crashed into a boulder, sending rocks flying everywhere. Kabuto Yakushi was currently bleeding from his abdomen, a hole in his stomach as he sat up against the partially destroyed rock. Naruto's sandaled feet touched the ground softly as he spoke, I'm getting a strong sense of deja vu, aren't you? He asked no one in particular. The unconscious Kabuto's body fell limp to the ground. Naruto pointed a thumb towards the body, ignoring the shocked expressions of his team. We can count this as a corpse, he said in disgust. Yamato and Sakura bowed their heads while Sai blankly stared at Naruto. All right, Yamato piped up, authority in his voice. Everyone snapped their heads to the commander. We'll split up into two teams, he said. Naruto raised a hand to object. That won't be necessary, the blonde said in a tone which suggested he was hiding something. Seeing the captain's confused look, he sighed. They're already awaiting our arrival, he said, turning his head towards the sky. The group blinked, perplexed. A sudden explosion rocked the area, causing the group sans Naruto to lose balance. A sinister smile made its way on his face. Follow me, he said, making his infamous cross-fingered seal. Foolish children, Orochimaru said, clicking his teeth in annoyance. Two figures stood near the Sanin, one ahead of him while the other stood to his right. The figure beside him pushed up his glasses, grunting in accordance with the previous statement. That Kyubi brat is as destructive as ever, isn't he, Sasuke? Blindly following a running Naruto through the dark corridor, Sai, Sakura, and Yamato hastened their pace, sensing the urgency in the boys' movements. Making a turn around a certain corner, the group saw a light at the end of the tunnel, the sun's rays shining through a hole that was created by a destructive attack. The hole was freshly made, as pebbles continued to fall, the sound of crushed rocks ground into dust falling to the ground. Naruto suddenly doubled his speed, kicking up a cloud of dust that blew into the faces of his companions. Sakura scowled, shielding her face from the dust. Using chakra in a precise point in her feet, she propelled herself with so much power and speed that she flew ahead of Naruto, skidding to a halt once she passed him. Are you ever patient? She shouted, spinning on her heel and getting in the boy's face. Naruto looked directly past the girl, basking in the sunlight as he focused his gaze upwards. Sakura, it's been a while, hasn't it? The familiar voice caused Sakura's face to drop, forming an unreadable expression. Naruto's eyes followed the girl as she strained herself to turn around. Robotically, she turned her head, her body following the same course of action. That voice. Sakura thought to herself as the bags under her eyes from sleepless nights became more pronounced. The blonde boy turned his head slightly to see Yamato and Sai out of the corner of his eye, falling in line with he and the speechless Sakura. As the sun reached a high point in the sky, the shadow of a tall figure loomed over Team 7. Stepping forward, Naruto placed a comforting hand on Sakura's shoulder before punching his palm. A bead of sweat trickled down the side of Sai's face, dropping to the hard ground with a small splash. Yamato's fingers twitched as he mulled over the best course of action to take, battle formulas racking his brain at a rapid pace. Yo, bastard, it's been a while. He said with a Cheshire grin, his eyes squinting to slits. Looking straight up to meet her eyes with the figure, Sakura let out a shaky breath. The girl inhaled sharply, emerald eyes meeting with cold, pure black pupils, which glared at her and her team. With heavy condescension, S. Sasuke. As the familiar voice caught Team 7's attention, Naruto and Sakura noted that not many changes were seen in the boy's appearance, apart from a slight change in height. His attire now consisted of indigo-colored pants, over which hung a stone blue cloth held up by a violet-colored obi. He complemented this with a white, long-sleeved shirt kept open at the torso and black arm guards covering his forearms. 
So, Naruto, he started with a tired expression. Dot you came too. The blonde kept the same infuriating smile on his face as the boy spoke. I assume this means Kakashi is here as well. He questioned before he saw someone unfamiliar to him take a step forward. Sorry, but Kakashi couldn't make it, Yamato said, standing ahead of the group. Naruto spared him a side glance, his smile faltering. We have Team Kakashi are here to take you back to Konoha. Team Kakashi, huh? One day, a time will come when I believe people will truly come to understand one another. Naruto raised a palm to his forehead, suddenly remembering his master's words. His eyes grew white as he looked at his hand, seeing it was the slightest bit damp. Sasuke's eyes blankly stared as his replacement lifted his tanto, pointing it at the boy, showing he was prepared for battle. Sakura narrowed her eyes at the boy's action, does he intend to kill him? Is this part of his assignment by Danzo as well? My stand-in, huh? Sasuke asked in a lazy tone, he said something about wanting to protect the bond between Naruto and me, but he looks like another weakling to me. Sai gripped the hilt of his blade tightly, his hand trembling slightly from the pressure exerted. Initially, my mission was to kill you, the pale boy began, causing Sakura to narrow her eyes, Yamato to look on with a knowing stare, and Naruto to remain silent, closing his eyes as he took a deep breath. Dot but, I'm done following orders I want to think for myself. Sai glanced towards Naruto, who turned his head, giving the boy his full attention. The boy's features hardened as he spoke. I feel like you can help me remember, Naruto to bring back the memories I had lost. Naruto raised an eyebrow, confused as to what the boy was referring to. Dot the things that were once very important to me, the boy paused to take a breath, I hadn't told you this, but you remind me of my brother in the manner of speech and how you act as well. Bold, brash, but with good intentions. Naruto's eyes closed as he hummed in thought, not knowing how to respond, if at all. As for you, Sasuke, the boy said, shifting his focus to the stoic Uchiha, I don't know much about you, but what I do know is that Naruto and Sakura are willing to risk everything for you. Naruto and Sakura both gave Sai a perplexed look, noticing how the boy had now broken out of his shell. To protect that bond, Sai continued, in the name of friendship. He glared at the boy as he uttered his next words. I don't know much about it, personally, but don't you, Sasuke. The raven-haired Uchiha smirked. Yeah, I did. It's exactly why I cut them off. He spat out in a lifeless tone. Naruto's fists clenched, blood seeping through his knuckles and dripping to the ground. I have different bonds now, he said, causing Naruto to glare and Sakura to look shocked, her mouth slightly agape. Yamato's face looked pensive while Sai remained with the same expressionless look. Dot the bond of hatred between my older brother and I. Naruto's eyes narrowed to slits, his mouth twisting into a frown. Personal ties only confuse, Sasuke said with a downcast look, remembering his brother's words. Itachi's nails dug into a younger Sasuke's skin, leaving marks as he the boy up by his throat, slamming him against a wall with a demeaning. Look on his features. His blood-red Sharingan flared to life, giving the boy an even darker countenance that left Sasuke breathless literally and figuratively. You're still too weak you don't have. The boy's body fell limply to the ground as his older brother dropped him unceremoniously. His head drooped down in shame as the boy walked away. Enough. Personal ties cause confusion, hate. Naruto's eyes flashed to a deep crimson before returning to Cerulean. Precious memories only make you weak. Sakura and Sai heard an audible snarl next to them. Upon turning their heads, they realized it was Naruto. Yamato's face turned grim. If this goes on, the only blonde of Team 7 snickered, irritating the monologuing Uchiha. Killing me that day would have broken that bond, right? And yet, a cloud of smoke puffed into existence beside Sasuke, a blonde identical to the one on the ground emerging. Orochimaru and Kabuto watched as the clone rested his arm around Sasuke's shoulder in a friendly gesture. Coal black eyes met with Cerulean as the clone's cheek was mere centimeters apart from Sasuke's. Got you couldn't, the Uchiha trained his eyes on the original, cuz why? You were afraid. The reason is simple. Lightning crackled around Sasuke's hand as he thrust it forward, aiming it towards the blonde's lung. You, just like me, have the power to awaken the Mangekio Sharingan, but the catch. A look of shock crossed the Uchiha's face as Naruto redirected the blow, the hand to pierce through his shoulder instead with a sickening squelch, Sasuke's hand emerging through the blonde's body coated with blood. 
is you have to kill your closest friend. The Naruto clone dispelled in a cloud of smoke, electricity dancing across the Uchiha's fingers as his arm fell to his side. I was simply doing as my brother did before me. It was a strategy to gain power. Naruto's expression remained unchanged as the boy appeared right beside him, arm draped around his shoulder in the same position he had done to him prior, only facing the other way. A dust cloud formed at the feet of Team 7's members from the speed at which the boy moved, shocking all but the blonde. I spared your life on a whim, he began in a cold emotionless tone, nothing more. He's fast, Yamato mentally exclaimed, shocked at being caught off guard. Was it not your dream to become Hokage? Sasuke mockingly questioned in the blonde's ear, I hope you've been training to catch up and not daydreaming about chasing me. If Sakura and I can't save you from yourself, he began, glancing at the back of the raven-haired boy's head when he heard a click, signifying an unsheathed sword, we can't call ourselves your friends, now can we? Aiming for a stab to the back, Sasuke drew his sword back before thrusting it towards the base of Naruto's spine. In a split second, Sai caught the wrist the boy held his weapon with, holding it up in the air. That block you chose, Sasuke said in a low tone, God was correct. About being Hokage, Naruto began, staring blankly ahead as a clone of him burst through the ground, hitting the Uchiha square in the chin, sending him yards high. It was just in time as well, because soon after, the ground was lit with electricity, Naruto using his strong affinity over the wind to negate it before it harmed his teammates. Chidori stream, Sasuke shouted, Sharingan flaring to life. The boy twisted in the air, allowing the wind to secure his momentum as he fell back to the ground, spinning on his heels and aiming a sword strike towards the blonde. Lightning crackled and danced around the metal, lighting the sword up with a blue hue. A clap was heard as Naruto raised his hands, slamming his palms against the sword and catching it mid-strike, causing the electricity to dissipate. Worry about your ambition first, Naruto said, completing the phrase he had left hanging before. So, you used wind chakra to combat my lightning. It seems you've become competent, the Uchiha said with mild surprise in his voice. But that block, the boy said, cheeks puffing up as he inhaled a large amount of air, causing Naruto's eyes to narrow, that was incorrect. He shouted as a stream of fire escaped his mouth, engulfing the blonde in a sea of flames. Sasuke, with his enhanced dexterity, deftly dodged the wooden spike protrusions that attempted to impale him coming from the ground. A look of shock showed on the boy's face as mid-jump, a human-sized boulder flew at him at great speeds. Unable to dodge, even with his better eyesight, the boy took the hard root and stuck his sword in the ground, getting the timing just right as he used the weapon to spin around the rock, watching as it crashed behind him in a shower of debris. Orochimaru licked his lips as the boy returned to his position looming over Team 7. I'm glad I made those flame retardant clothing seals, Naruto thought as he looked over himself, seeing minor burns on his clothing. Sakura dusted her hands off the dirt that ended up on her gloves as she stared down at her former teammate. Glad Naruto's alright, she thought, before looking to her other teammates. Seeing they too were fine, she let out a breath of relief. Yamato's brow was covered with sweat as he mulled over the proceedings. If a battle between these two ensues, it's possible even the collateral damage would kill us. We have to end this, quick but we don't know whether or not Orochimaru and Kabuto will step in. So, you would rather have Orochimaru steal your body for power, than re-establish those bonds that you severed even if the former causes you more pain. Naruto said, dusting himself off and patting himself down. His cerulean eyes met the coal black ones that looked down on him for years. Now, in a literal sense, Sasuke sighed exasperatedly. If it happens to me, so be it. The phrase put all of Team 7 into stunned silence, as they stared in disbelief. I don't care what happens to me or the rest of the world, so long as I get my revenge. Nothing else matters. To be honest, neither Orochimaru nor I am yet strong enough to defeat Itachi on our own. But, if I gain the power to beat Itachi by giving myself to Orochimaru, so be it. The wind howled angrily as Sasuke spoke, Naruto's face donning a serious look. Aight, fuck this talking, he said, the bandaged fabric around his arms loosening. Sasuke raised his left hand after doing a set of seals. Couldn't have said it better myself. A pale hand gripped the boy's forearm, stopping him from releasing whatever jutsu he had planned. A deep rumbling was heard. 
All members of Team 7 apart from Naruto turned their gazes towards the now forming storm clouds. Darkness slowly enveloped the area the group of ninjas was standing in. Orochimaru gave Sasuke a sideways glance. Now, now, no need to be hasty Sasuke-kun, he said. The tone in his voice indicated he knew something their opposition didn't. You understand why you can't kill them, right? Sasuke scoffed. The Akatsuki's on the move, Kabuto clarified, a hand on his hip as he chastised the Uchiha. We want these Konoha people to dispose of as many Akatsuki members as possible. Those meddlesome people would only get in the way of your precious revenge, is that not correct? He reasoned. Quite the pathetic reason, Sasuke replied flatly, raising an open palm to the sky. Naruto narrowed his eyes. The second he did, a gust of wind picked up, dusting kicking up in the crater he and his team were standing in. Sai. Sakura, and Yamato all covered their faces using their forearms, Sai gripping the tanto on his back in preparation, Sakura clenching a fist, and Yamato extending another hand in preparation to use his wood release. The winds picked up, even more, causing the entire crater to be surrounded by dust. Just as Naruto's face disappeared from view, Sasuke leapt forward, a sound emulating crackling lightning emanating from his step. He unsheathed his blade with a smooth swiftness and practiced ease. Naruto lunged forward with just as much intensity, a look of calm fury on his face. He noticed Sasuke put his blade in a thrust-like motion, seemingly intending to stab him in the chest, said blade crackling with sparks of electricity periodically. Time slowed down as Naruto spread his arms out wide. Coal black eyes met Cerulean blue and with cries of the other's name they clashed. Sasuke. Naruto. A spark of light was seen by Orochimaru and Kabuto, the only ones who were unaffected by the dust storm, and the former licked his lips in anticipation. Kabuto pushed his glasses slightly up the bridge of his nose, smirking, although he was anxious. When Naruto and Sasuke clashed, the force of their collision blew back the dust and debris, clearing the way. Everyone sans Orochimaru stood wide-eyed with shock at the development. At the center of the crater, Naruto held Sasuke's blade in a barehanded block. Wind Chakra quickly overtook Lightning and Sasuke let out a grunt at the sheer strength in Naruto's hold. Said boy had a serious yet bored look on his face that was infuriating to the Uchiha. What's wrong, idiot? Frozen with fear, was all he got out before he grunted once again, feeling an intense pressure put upon him that caused him to stumble. It felt as though his weight had been multiplied by dozens. He quickly fell to his knees, Naruto's hold on the blade loosening, and as that was his only support he was forced to his hands as he watched the sword fall to the ground with a heavy clang. It feels like my body weighs several tons. He forced his head up to look at Naruto who was staring at him with an impassive, condescending gaze. What, did you do? He found it a struggle to speak but grit out those words to gain some semblance of understanding towards his current predicament. He saw the corner of the blonde's mouth turn upwards slightly and widened his eyes as he looked behind the orange and black clad boy. On the ground in the same position as he, there were Naruto's teammates, though faring far worse than him. Wait, then that means. He slowly turned his head with catastrophic amounts of difficulty to see Kabuto and Orochimaru, the former on one knee panting heavily and the latter hunched over in an attempt to stand straight, his bangs shadowing his face. The Sanin had a grimace on his face and a yellow, slitted eye held a fierce glare that was directed towards Sasuke's former teammate. That, fool, came the gravelly voice of Orochimaru, he taught you, ceiling. He half exclaimed half hissed out. Naruto did not attempt to respond and simply crouched down to eye level with the now glaring Uchiha. An infuriatingly large grin was plastered on his face. Nay, bastard, look. He said cheerily, pointing a finger to the sky. As Sasuke attempted to do so, a swift breeze blew by him and he saw that the thunderclouds he formed quickly dispersed, the sun shining brightly with its rays peeking through the clouds and illuminating the cheery blonde. Sasuke grit his teeth, dropping his head, not of his own will, to glower at his ex-teammate. How could this lowlife scum be able to put him in such a precarious position with such little difficulty? It was simply preposterous. You see, Tem, gravity affects us all, he began in. A lecturing tone, it surrounds you and me both, your pedophile of a teacher and his sex slave with the silver hair. The two insulted men glared at the blonde with their killer intent aimed at him which easily washed over him. He sighed exasperatedly. That's the only hint I can give you, Sasuke tilde Chan. 
Not gonna reveal my abilities, that would be stupid wouldn't it? He said with a chuckle. Sasuke's fingers dug into the ground and sweat poured off his body from the strain. He growled as he attempted to stand in an upright position, completely neglecting his sword. Retreat, retreat, we must retreat. Orochimaru thought in panic. His thoughts were intruded upon by a deep chuckle. Looking towards its source he bit back a curse. Naruto, who was now standing, had his hand on his head, fingers intertwined with his blonde locks as he had a crazed look in his eye. Quickly, his eyes shifted from blue to a deep crimson with slitted irises. He licked his lips, blood trailing down his tongue as it passed over his elongated canines. The blonde's one visible stared at Sasuke. Team 7 quickly understood what was going on as they felt the intense pressure of Naruto's ki radiating off of him stacked with the increased gravity, which was a fierce combination, nigh impossible to break. Naruto raised one leg straight up, staring intensely at the hunched form of Sasuke who was glaring daggers at him with eyes of the same color, only with three comma-shaped marks spinning wildly. Dodge, he whispered out, quickly dropping the gravity seals as well as his leg in an axe kick towards the Uchiha's head. With his enhanced depth perception due to his bloodline, Sasuke was able to get evade Naruto's kick just barely, which was aimed at his back, but his head still took a great deal of damage, and his face was buried deep into the dirt. Orochimaru lunged towards the boy's downed form but was flanked by another Naruto who buried his foot ankle deep into the Sanin's gut, sending the snake sage flying into the side of the crater, his body's imprint forming its own mini crater. The Naruto that hit him quickly, poofed, and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Yamato quickly flashed through hand signs, thick, wooden spikes protruding from the ground, soaring towards the downed Uchiha as Sakura and Sai deftly ran atop the wooden precipices. They soared past Naruto and were mere inches from ensnaring Sasuke before a crunching sound was heard. Kabuto's hand, which was in the form of a knife easily sliced through the jutsu like a knife through butter, and he quickly picked up Sasuke, stumbling a bit at seeing the cold and apathetic stare Naruto sent towards him. Sakura quickly withdrew four Sinbon needles from her pouch and threw them at Kabuto, aiming them towards his face, but the silver-haired lab assistant blocked them with such precision using his medical chakra-enhanced fingernails. Sai attempted to flank his side, his tanto drawn, but took a heel to the gut for his efforts. Sakura quickly caught the pale boy and her feet dug into the ground as she skidded across the crater from the force. Orochimaru, who was slumped over in his personal crater started coughing raspily, blood trickling down his lip and droplets soaking the ground. He gave a twisted grin towards Naruto before mouthing something and vanishing, his form getting engulfed by flames, not leaving a trace. His subordinates followed right after in the same fashion. Sakura panted, whether, from the exertion of the gravity and Naruto's chakra or the mental strain from meeting her long-gone teammate, she didn't know. She let Sai go before collapsing on the ground in a heap, turning her head to see Sasuke's blade. She saw a bandaged hand pick it up before seeing Naruto's scrutinizing gaze towards the object. Sai watched the blonde carefully, sheathing his own blade. Yamato sighed, sweat pouring down his brow. Well, we have an object of his, so we're guaranteed to have his scent with us at all times, he gave a pointed look towards Naruto who nodded. Flicking the hand that wasn't holding the blade, a scroll appeared and he twirled it between his fingers before unfurling it, giving a glance towards the calligraphy on it before making a one-handed ram sign. The blade disappeared in a poof of smoke and Naruto rolled up the scroll, taking an ink brush out of seemingly nowhere before he deftly slid the brush across the scroll, inscribing the words, Bastard's Blade, Yamato sweat dropped, Sai gave Naruto a blank stare and Sakura stared in shock and awe. That was like magic, she thought, sparkles in her eyes. I wonder how he made that scroll appear, was it in his sleeve? Or, as the pink-haired girl mulled over whether or not her teammate was a magician, the rest of Team 7 stood in silent contemplation. Naruto thought back to a comical scene that had taken place in his mindscape. Before, Sasuke looked straight ahead, glaring intensely at the figure of Naruto sitting atop the snout of the nine-tailed fox of legends. To think you had something like this inside of you, I see now the source of your power, Sasuke said, letting the sentence hang in the air. The fox laughed, a deep rumbling sound resonating within the mindscape, causing it to shake. Sasuke wobbled, attempting to use chakra to remain steady but felt his control slip. Naruto leapt off of his friend's snout, 
landing in front of the Uchiha with a quiet splash. He ran a hand through his hair blonde hair, snickering. The fact you retain your arrogance even when it's ill-placed, it's humorous, he said, continuing to give a fox-like snicker. Sasuke walked right past the blonde, ignoring his taunts before stopping right in front of the fox, glaring up at the creature that stared at him with a wicked grin. Kurama, Naruto said, sticking a finger in his ear, don't hurt him too badly. Kurama snorted before coming as close to eye level as was possible to the intruder of the mindscape. Sasuke felt the hot gust of breath hit his face and winced as it almost blew him back. Your eyes, those accursed eyes, Kurama said with a growl, causing ripples in the water beneath Sasuke's feet. Naruto turned his head slightly to watch the current scene play out. They're similar to that of Madara Uchiha's. Both boys had quirked eyebrows, the Uchiha though, frowned. I know not of any such person, he said with a scowl, reaching out his hand to grasp the fox's snout. Sasuke was blasted back into non-existence by the laugh that came from the fox. Naruto chuckled, his shoulders shaking before it turned into a burst of deep laughter. Seeing Naruto's shoulders tremble, present Sai mistook it as a sign the blonde was disappointed, sad, or even angry at himself for allowing Sasuke to escape. He reached out a hand to place it on the boy's shoulder comfortingly before he heard chuckles. Chuckles soon turned into laughs. Naruto hunched over, grasping his stomach as he struggled to stand. So guys, I am going to end this part here. If you like the video, consider subscribing the channel, and don't forget to comment, your favorite part of the story. With this I am signing out.